Well, happy Friday, everyone. Welcome to another Friday night and another lawn care live stream. My name is Ron Henry, and I am your humble host to help answer your lawn care questions. If you're new to the channel or new to the live stream, first of all, welcome. Uh, the way this works is really simple. Uh, you simply put your questions down in the chat and I work through them in the order that they come in. Sometimes I have the answer, sometimes I don't, but either way, we have a great time talking about lawn care. So as always, let's see who is here tonight, who's hanging out with us. We see we got Timothy Wolf in the house. Timothy's talking about a sale that we're running on Humic Max. What's going on, uh, Timothy? Hopefully all is going well. And we got Patrick. Uh, Patrick's in the house saying, um, even Mr. Henry, looking forward to the live cast. I'm, I'm Ron. Mr. Henry's my dad, so you just call me Ron. And then uh, next up, we got C. Hill uh, as well saying, greetings and salutations, Ron. Hope all is well with you and yours. Each one, teach one. I like it. I like it. Yeah, everything's going well. Can't complain. Cannot complain. And then we got Earth Trimmers in the house. Uh, give me a thumbs up. It's been cool talking to you in the comments, man. I saw you, you've been commenting on some of the videos on pre-emergent and on coastal. So it was cool going back and forth with you. It's cool to hear about someone that's been using that product for a number of years and is having good results with it. So really, really good. So let's, let's jump right in. Let's start with um, Timothy. Uh, first up, he says, um, you know, happy Friday, Ron. Great selling Humic Max. Just picked up another bag. Thanks for all the advice on the soil test results. You're very, very welcome, sir. And, you, and the question he has is, how long will the sale last? Yeah, so um, really, as long as supplies last, um, I'm, I'm going to try to keep it keep it going um, at least through Black Friday uh, through, through that through that weekend. We'll see, depending on 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 you know what uh, what supplies look like, um, we can just go from there. So. So yeah, definitely feel free to take advantage of that. For any of you guys who don't know that what Timothy's talking about is Humic Mac, which is the fertilizer that Lebanon Turf graciously um, allowed us to make available to the DIY community. Great, great fert has gotten lots of awesome feedback uh, over this season. Um, it is on sale. It's like a 35% discount. Normally it's $69.99 for a bag, which again is still still a pretty good deal at that price. But now we're selling it at $44.99. So for you know Black Friday for the holiday season really trying to make it possible for you guys to stock up on this for next year. Um, excellent product. Again, this is a 1608, so it works great on, on pretty much all grass types, as well as has that 8.9% um, uh, humic acid as well. So great product. I have yet to get an email from anyone that's been using it that has not had great results. So feel free to take advantage of that. When the sale is over, the sale is over. When supplies are gone, they're gone. But uh, but yeah, definitely, definitely feel free to take advantage of that. Really happy that we're able to, to get that promotion going. Trying to get something going for you guys for Black Friday. I got another another thing as well, but we're going to talk about that a little bit later that you guys will be able to take advantage of. Um, that won't start till next week, but stay tuned. Uh, more on that. All right. Uh, next up, we got um, Kevin D. Jones in the house. He says, hey, Ron and everyone, I ran out of my yard mastery stash and it is unavailable. Uh, fertilizer will be at an all-time high next year in the news, so you better stock up from the golf course lawn store. I appreciate that, Kevin. Yeah, I mean, it, it, I guess the supply chain is hurting everything. I, I would have thought that a lot of what they would use to make fertilizer would be, you know, local to the United States, but perhaps not. Perhaps not. You know, the big thing with fertilizer is as long as you can, um, you've got a, a place that's cool and dry to keep it. There's no reason to not not stock up. You know, I've got, um, you know, I, I had some, I still have some Morganite um, in there. That's at this point, it's two seasons old, but it's still in great shape. I, I gave a bag of it to um, Alex's brother in, uh, yeah, Alex's brother-in-law um, to use on his lawn. It was absolutely fine. So as long as it's kept dry, you can absolutely hang on to it uh, for uh, for for quite a while. All right, let's see what else we got here. We got Papa Mo's Low in the house. We got uh, Daryl Tunstall in the house, the usual suspects. What's going on, Daryl? Hopefully you're doing well. And again, congrats to everyone that won last week. Hopefully you guys have got your swag already. Again, the winners from last week. Um, let's see, we had Alex B, we had uh, Kevin, we had Dwayne. Um, and I never heard from um, Dimitri. So I didn't get, to, I didn't get your hat sent out, uh, but... Um, but yeah, you guys hopefully should have gotten uh, the hats and a few other things that I threw in there with these few other extra goodies. Uh, so yeah, and if not, let me know and I'll I'll do my best. But I mean, it should it should be there to you uh, by now. All right, next up we got Alex B. He's talking about again Humic Max. He says Humic Max is already a great value, but it is an absolute steal with this sale on the golf course lawn store that I couldn't pass up. Quite a few other products on sale at the moment as well. Yeah, absolutely, um, Alex. So um, the thing that's going to be that we're going to be also making available to you guys is um, you guys know that uh, this in this past year we partnered with Miramichi Green to make a lot of their excellent, excellent 
uh, lawn products available to you guys. So starting next Friday, not this Friday, next Friday, the 26th um, or Thursday night at midnight, I guess you could say, um, you're going to be able to save 10% on all Miramichi Green products in the golf course lawn store. So what does that mean? That means, um, you know, the golf course lawn carbon kit, obviously the pest control, really zero, essential G, pretty much everything that Miramichi Green makes that we sell is going to be, um, you can get a 10% discount uh, on those products. To, to, to use that, and I'll say this a couple of times during the show in case people come in later, but to use that, you're gonna need this discount code. It's mgreen10, right here, mgreen10. You're gonna be using, put that in uh, during checkout and it'll not 10% uh, off the cost of, um, of the Miramichi Green products in the store. So again, starting next week, Next week, Friday on Black Friday is when that will happen. And that sale is limited. That's only going to run until uh, November 30th, until the end of the month. So from Friday, next Friday until the end of the month is when you can save 10% on Miramichi Green products. Humic Max uh, is on sale until it um, until it runs out. So, uh, so there you go. Great, great, great stuff. Uh, glad you're doing well, Papa Moe's Low. Um, all is well with me. It's been a, a this week was a little bit hectic, but uh, you know, all things considered, not bad. The lawn is really starting to turn now. For any of you guys that watched the uh, the YouTube stories, uh, you guys saw the lawn is it's losing its color. Starting to, I'm starting to get more yellow uh, in the lawn now than green. So it's all par for the course. Unfortunately, it's all part of it. But uh, but yeah, yeah, I'm happy with how the lawn did this year. But uh, yeah, all things considered, all is uh, is going uh, well. And Oxen says, uh, good evening, sir. Happy to be here once again. Ready to ask Santa for a few things in the lawn store. Well, you know something else they can ask him for? You can ask him for some uh, some Marie Green products, um, for sure. You know, you absolutely can can do that because, again, they're going to go on sale. You can save 10% uh, on those, which is, which, is, uh, which is pretty cool. Yep, and then uh, Alex is saying, yeah, 100% supply chain issues with price increases expected on many lawn care products. Uh, best to try and stock up now if the wallet allows. That, that is that is good advice, um, Alex. You know, it's funny. I went to get my um, the oil changed on my, um, my SUV this week, and I went to like uh, one of the bigger dealerships in this area, and they literally had 10, 10 or 11 new cars on the entire lot. They had other cars that were used, like pre-owned cars, but as far as like new inventory, they had like 11 cars, which is pretty insane. Um, that really drives home how things how things are right now, which is uh, interesting, interesting times. All right, next up we got Dalvin Larry. He says, uh, no questions tonight, just a simple like button. Have a good Friday. I appreciate that, Dalvin. Thanks, uh, thanks so much. Hopefully you are doing well. Hopefully your lawn is uh, doing well. And then next up, we got Mark, uh, Mark F saying, good evening. Good evening, Mark. Hopefully you're, hopefully you're, uh, you're having uh, a good night. And then next is Jeremy White. So for our first question of the night, um, it's not related to, to the sale. He says, I'm having a problem with ryegrass. Um, any suggestions on what to do with it? So that is your question. So so a couple ways you can go about this, Jeremy. Um, if, you're already, if you're having ryegrass already, um, I mean, you can spray Celsius on it. That's kind of an that's kind of an expensive way to go about it. Um, if you've not put down pre-emergent, something you can try that will kind of kill two birds with one stone is to use a product called Coastal. So Coastal, if I can bring it up here, if technology will cooperate. Yep, there we go. Yep. So what Coastal is? It's a pre-emergent. Um, it's a, it's a combination pre-emergent and post-emergent product. So what's in it? is prodiamine is the pre-emergent and it also contains a mazoquin and simazine. Um, and among uh, the, the grass types that it targets are annual and perennial ryegrass. So if you've not done your pre-emergent as yet, uh, this is an option that you can use, which can, again, kill two birds with one stone, should get rid of the ryegrass and also prevent, um, you know, get rid of the ryegrass and also get your pre-emergent down. If all you're looking to do is target the ryegrass, you can use uh, Celsius, which is another option as well. A bit more expensive option. Um, I'm not sure how well it's going to work this time of year, but again, use it. You put down a um, as long as the the ryegrass is actively growing, it should it should knock it out. Uh, be sure to use a, a, a surfactant with it, like a non ionic surfactant. I use the um, the high yield spreader sticker. Um, I'm not sure if I've got a if I can bring that up here. Um, let's see, spreader. You guys have seen it in my videos. Um, I actually need to get some more because I'm almost uh, I ran out of it here, but. Um, but yeah, this stuff, in addition to getting Celsius, you're going to want to use this. This is going to allow the product to adhere to the, uh, to the, to the leaves of, um, of the ryegrass, to the foliage, and will help it be more effective. So if you decide to go the Celsius route, um, you're going to need to use this with it. If you decide to go the coastal route, 
then you don't need to do anything. Just mix it appropriately with water. If memory serves me, it's just under one and a half ounces of, um, of coastal uh, per thousand square feet mixed with a gallon of water. And that will, uh, between one of those two, that should, um, should knock it out. And I'll, I'll put links down here uh, for you in chat, assuming you don't, um, you don't have it already. Something tells me you probably do. You probably do, Jeremy. I know you've been you've been um, you know pretty pretty up and up on uh, on on you know a lot of things I've, I've been doing in as far as content over the season. So you probably have some of these things. If not, you can get Celsius there, and you can get uh, Coastal. I think I have a link for it. I do, I do. Good job, Ron, for having this fulfilled out already. And Coastal, you can get there. Either one of those options uh, will work will work well. So hopefully that helps. Thanks for the uh, question. All right, next up, we have Lois H in the night says, good evening, it's a good night. Um, I spent um, the hours listening and learning good things from you while I cook curry dish. Whoa, which curry dish are you cooking? Um, curry goat, curry chicken, um, what? You, you, you left out, so curry get a curry dish and sipping on hot cocoa. I'm sipping on, uh, on lemonade, but sounds good, I approve of that. I, lo I love curry, curry and hot cocoa. Tomorrow's leaf day, huh? That is one benefit to not really having a lot of trees is I don't really have to deal with leaves. Granted, some of the neighbors that have leaves, you know, on their trees that are shawl shedding now um, are all falling on, on my lawn a little bit too. But for the most part, I don't have a huge leaf problem to deal with, which I like. I like. But I, I'll, be, um, I'll be sending good vibes your way tomorrow when you're out there battling with the leaves. So until then, right? All right. Next up, we have um, Stan uh, Slanted. That's a cool name. He says, "Good evening, everyone from Texas. What's going on, Stan Slanted? So why are you why are you standing slanted instead of instead of upright?" But uh, but yeah, good evening. Thanks thanks for coming to hang out in the live stream. Hopefully, all is uh, is going well. And then we got Cyrus in the house. Cyrus Cyrus. I'm going to do my best not to butcher your last name. It is Costowney, I think. Yes, Cyrus Costowney. Um, he says, just want to say thanks for the sale on Humic Max. Picked up two bags for next year. Awesome, Cyrus. Uh, that's, that's a good That's a good plan. Again, it's a really, really good sale. It's like 35% off the, the current pricing. So, uh, you know, definitely definitely take advantage of that if, you're, if your budget uh, permits. All right, next up we have a question from Adam uh, Meloche. I think that's correct. I think that's right. He says, happy Friday all. Anyone have experience with a Jacobson Eclipse electric greens mower? Picking up two tomorrow. Bought them off an auction. Um, I don't. I don't have an experience with any any Jacobsons. First of all, we got to clap it up for you getting not one but two mowers. So, yay for that. Um, you know, I don't know. I, don't, I guess just just do some research and see if there are if there's any YouTube videos on on those units, particularly the electric ones. The only thing I would be concerned about with getting a pre-owned electric um, mower is um, like, you know, the battery life, like how fresh the batteries that are coming with it are uh, to make sure you're not going to have, you know, what I assume would be expensive to replace. So, um, so that's the only thing I, I would really look into. But if you are, um, if you have already done your research, look, they're in great shape. Just, um, you know, see if you can find like an operator's manual online. I know with Toro, uh, those are pretty easy to come across if you do some research uh, online. And for the Jacobsons, I would think... Um, you'd be able to find that as well too. So that's cool, man. Seems like more and more people are going the electric route. I'm getting more questions about people going for, you know, going green, or I say going green, but going, the, you know, more environmentally friendly route when it comes to, uh, to real mowing. So that's, that's cool. You definitely have to let us know how it how it works out. I'm not sure if um, Demir, yeah, Demir's here, but I think Demir a, is a Toro man. So he's probably, he may have some, some experience with Jacobson, but I mean, if anyone knows, he will chime in and let you know. So we'll see, right? All right. Next up, we have Manchester Shoals in the house. It says, what are some tips to deal with soil compaction? I use humic acid and biochar and core aerate once or twice per season. I have a lot of clay and want to help encourage deep root growth. You're doing a lot of the right things, Manchester. Um, you know, the, the the big thing I was looking for was the core aeration. Um, you know, if you can, if you, if the soil is really compacted and, you know, with everything you're doing, I, I would think that you should be turning the corner as far as some of your compaction issues with you doing, you know, aeration a couple times per season, but maybe step it up, you know, perhaps um, look, I mean, if you're assuming, assuming you can do this, right? Again, I, I don't know if you actually own the aerator, you have to go out and rent it, but instead of maybe twice, instead of only twice per season, perhaps every six to eight weeks, um, you know, do a, do another uh, core aeration just to really help loosen things up. Uh, in addition to that, um, what you can do is a, is a good top dress on top of that. So, 
after you finish the, the aeration, if you can do like a nice 70-30 blend, um, topsoil and sand, that will help as well too to help um, to help the, the you know the basically the clay from filling in all the voids. And you, I hate to say starting back where you started, but um, you know you, you're 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 putting you're basically putting in columns throughout the the soil profile that are not clay anymore. So that should help some with um with the with you with a compaction not not rearing its ugly head as quickly but i would say just keep doing what you're doing i mean everything which you're talking about the humic acid the biochar and especially the core aeration that's what i would do that's what i would do the only thing i would say is let's increase that frequency and see how it uh how it does now if you're doing it to deal with like drainage problems that's another reason why um core aeration is something that i'm a, I'm a fan of right like literally one of the best things, sorry, uh, not coloration, but top dressing, um, coupled with coloration is one of the best things that I'm, I'm a huge fan of. Like literally the best thing that I got out of top dressing my lawn was not the fact that it looks nice and smooth and you know you can mow it really short, is the fact that a lot of the drainage problems that I was having completely went away after I after my, my very first top dress. So something to consider as well, that's another level of effort, but if you're going through all this trouble, um, it's worth doing at least one time. And again, I would do a 70-30 mix if you're gonna go that route. Great, great question. All right, Lawn to Learn is up um, next. He says, um, what's up, my lawn friends? Enjoying my Friday. Happy Friday, Ron. Thank you, sir. I appreciate it. He says, what's the lowest height of cut for Bermuda, for Bermuda if you cut it every day? Um, I think it depends on the um, on the Bermuda type that you have, Lawn to Learn. Like some of the dwarfs you can go really, you can go shorter with, um, but like Arden 15 uh, tolerates being cut at half an inch. Um, or actually, I was just under half an inch uh, really well. There isn't, there's not really a big loss in color or any or any issues with that. The thing is, like to your point, um, the shorter you go, like once you get down to half an inch, especially during summer months, you're really on an everyday mowing, um, you know, mowing program, and and that's with PGR. That's using plant growth regulator as well. So uh, you know, under half an inch is completely doable. There's some people, some guys you can see online on on, uh, on some of the. Um, on some of the Facebook groups that are under that. I know some guys that are cutting it like in the uh, like 0 0.3, 0 0.35 to 0.45 heights of cut with Bermuda. Um, I've not seen, they say they are, I've not seen how the lawn looks as far as color when you cut it at that height. I would begin, I would imagine that some of the color would start to fall off if you start cutting it that short. Um, but um, Bermuda, especially a lot of the, the hybrids, like your Tifway 419 and the Arden 15 are, are, they can tolerate being cut very short as long as you're doing it like you're saying every day. So it's a cool experiment. It's something to play with. Like I did it a lot this season, like um, for the a lot of the season I was mowing every day. And then um, I went to every other day uh, as I started bringing the height of the height of cut back up. Every, every day mowing is rough, man. It's a, it's a lot of work. It's a lot of work. Cause the thing is too, whenever you have like a, a stretch of rain where you have two or three days where it rains, you got a bit of a mess on your hands, right? So Something to keep in mind, and honestly, as far as how the the lawn looks, there's not a huge difference between like half an inch and like 0.62, like you know five eighths. Like that is um, that little bit of extra height uh, gives you a bit more buffer, and there's not a huge difference in the way uh, the turf looks. So just something to keep in mind, just something to think about if you're you know as you're going down this uh, that route. All right, we got Vince in the house. The lawn engineer, what's going on, Vince? Hope you're doing well, sir. It's just eating everyone. Hope all is going well with you. Hope all is doing well. And then we got D.W. Davis uh, saying, greetings from Carbondale, Illinois. Where is Carbondale? I know where Chicago is and Evanston. I don't, I don't know where Carbondale is, but um, thanks for coming to hang out. And then we have Mr. Demir, you know, our guest from last week who did an awesome job. Uh, it was really fun having um, having you on, Devin. He says, what's up, Ron? Looking forward to some good turf talks again tonight. Thanks for coming to hang out. I really uh, do appreciate it. Uh, the stuff that I sent out to you, again, left today. So hopefully before Thanksgiving, you should get it. So we shall see. But yeah, man, uh, it was really, it was a ton of fun last week. I, I rewatched like the, the live stream uh, last week and it was, it was, it was a lot of fun, man. We got to get you on again to, uh, you know, when you have, when time permits to, to come hang out again. I think everyone really, really enjoyed it. So really appreciate you taking uh, the time. All right, so next question we have is from Erna Joe, who says, do I need a lime treatment for Bermuda grass in November? Depends, Erna. Um, the, you know, whether or not you need lime is based on uh, the pH of your soil, and the way to know what the pH of your soil is is through a soil test, right? So if you um, grab one of these guys, like the soil test kit that I use and really like is the one from my soil. We have these on uh, the golf course lawn store. You can pick one of these bad boys up, they're super easy to use, and um, you know you 
get the samples, collect them, send them out. Within a week, you're gonna get your results back and it will tell you what your pH is. Now really, the Goldilocks zone for um, most grasses is between 5.8 to 7.172 in there. Really, the mid sixes is exactly where you wanna be. But you know, low, uh, 5.8 is like the, the lower end of the spectrum of what's acceptable, and then the low, low sevens is on the high end. So if you're, you're, you do a soil test and your pH comes back as low, so meaning your soil is acidic, that is when adding lime um, makes sense. That's when you're gonna wanna do that. When it comes to adding lime, uh, and again, this is stuff you'll get from your soil test results, is there's two types of lime you're gonna see. You're gonna see calcitic lime and dolomitic lime. Calcitic lime is what you're gonna wanna use if your magnesium levels in your soil, again, your soil test results are gonna tell you this, if your soil, if your magnesium levels are fine, so you don't need, your, your, your soil's not hurting for any magnesium, then, um, then calcitic lime is what you're gonna wanna go with. Dolomitic lime, which is another type of lime, um, has um, you know higher magnesium concentration, which will help bring those levels up. So either one will work. It's just that dolomitic is a better fit if your magnesium levels happen to be levels happen to be low at the same time. So uh, the long the sh long short answer is uh, yes, maybe. Um, but uh, yeah, soil test is, is what's going to uh, tell you that. And really, if you're going to pick one of these up on the golf course lawn store. Uh, and you don't have, um, you've never gotten a soil test before, I'd recommend that you get the starter pack. It, it comes with a soil test, um, the soil test kit, and one of these guys. It's like a soil probe tool. These things are money for easily getting samples um, and just making really easy work of not messing up your, you know, your lawn, trying to you know, dig out big chunks of it, um, and just getting samples that you can easily send in. So that's that's what I'd recommend. If you do need it, um, you know, you can definitely put it down and just water it in. Uh, you want to do it before the ground freezes. I'm not sure where in the country you are, but you know, let's say you're in Georgia where really it doesn't, the ground doesn't really freeze. Um, getting that down, getting some lime down with a heavy watering um, makes a lot of sense. So I would get it done sooner than, than later, uh, if at all possible. Great, great question. All right, uh, next up, we got Kevin D. Jones. He says, I just ordered uh, my, my Country Club four bags to get me through the summer, a steal. Yeah, man, load up, load up, load up. While, again, while, while it's there, you guys can get it at that price. Um, so yeah. And then Alex, uh, yeah, so Alex, I I agree with you. Demir did an awesome job on the stream last week. He's like, he's a natural man. You know, you should start a YouTube channel and like do like, you know, turf talk. I mean, granted, you can just always welcome to come on, come on here if you want. But I mean, you know, obviously you have a lot of cool stuff to share, but it, it's it's like another job. So I'm not sure if you really want to, if you want to go that route. All right, um, Travis Winson, I guess everyone, the entire country club gang is, is chiming in. He says, that country club went on sale. I got a couple of bags that came today. You're very, very welcome. I'm glad that you guys are taking advantage of it. And then uh, Earth Trimmers has a question for me. He says, um, what are your thoughts on Miramichi Green? I'm planning on using more of it in uh, the 2022 season. I love it. I've, I've only had um, really good results with the, with the products. Um, the, the, three that I pro the three products that I use the most are the, um, I can actually show you here. It's, it's what's in the carbon, it's what's in the golf course lawn kit. It consists of three products. So, um, in here, you see you got, if I can get my face out of the way, like there, perfect, yep. So you got three products. It comes, so the, the Release Zero, the Nutri-Kelp, and Biospectrum, those three are the ones that I make the most use of. And when I use them, I, I tend to mix them with um, my Liquid Furt, so Turfplex, um, or if it's the time for me to apply um, Plant Growth Regulator, I'll mix it along with that. So the, the, the nice thing about these products, again, the Release Zero being that micronized carbon, it's going to help with, my, with microbial activity in your soil. And because the, um, Miramichi Green explained this to me, but the, 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 side, the particle size of the release zero, the micronized um, uh, biochar, the carbon they use in there, is, um, is on, the, on the order of like 400 Dalton, which I didn't, until I started researching this, I didn't even know that Dalton was a unit of measurement, but it's really, really, really small. Which, um, what that means is whenever you mix this product along with other products, it really helps accelerate um, foliar uptake. So all, all these products, none of them need to be watered in. You literally spray them and you can just wait for it to rain and just, or, or just leave them on the, on the, the plant itself. Um, I've had nothing but great results with them, man. Between um, the, the Release Zero and then also the nutri -Kelp, which I can go back and talk to you about that. The nutri -Kelp is their, um, their kelp product. It's 24% um, kelp. And it's also a mild fertilizer, so it's a one one four. So you know, I I, um, I chose these uh, to to put to put together in the carbon kit because I know a lot of you guys tend to have the um, a liquid fur that you may like. I didn't want you to be to be pigeonholed into um, their nine hundred one C product. 
So what really what I, what I could have done, right, is I could have gotten not done release zero and done, actually I'll show you guys here, and not done that and got, and done like the NutriKelp, the Biospectrum, and I think I've got 901C here, done, done this. And then this is like an all-in-one. So this is basically release zero with a higher percentage of nitrogen in it. So, but again, th me putting that in the kit is pretty much means you're going to be using 901C as your liquid furt. And I don't know how some of you guys are, you're picky, right? It's like, you know, liquid furt for some people is like the type of oil they put in their cars. So they're really, really picky about that kind of thing. So that's why I chose the release zero, um, uh, the release zero product to put in the carbon kit. I've had nothing but great results with it between that and also the Essential G, which is their granular product. It's like half, um, well, it's actually more than that. It's a little bit more than half um, uh, compost. It's got some biochar, it's got some humate in it. It's also got some silica. So it's just a really, really good product. You can think of like uh, Essential G, which is this, come back here. You can think of Essential G as like Carbon Pro G 2.0. So it's like the next the next iteration of, um, of Carbon Pro G. So. Excellent products. I mean, everyone that's been using it has had uh, really good success, really good results with it. So something else that I've used and I plan to use next year as well. So I, I, I definitely all in on Miramichi Green products. I really like, um, I like their, their um, I like the results I get with the products, but I also like their, their approach to sustainability. Um, the one thing with any of their products, none of them require that you water them in. Um, because again, remember, they're designed for the professional turf industry. And, and because of that, they um, the products are formulated such that if you get rain, great, that, that's fine. But if you if it doesn't rain, um, you're still the products are still gonna work, work just fine. So um that's that's another big reason why I like them. In addition, we also had the the pest control, which was released later on um this fall, I think is when we talked started talking about that, um, which is their their all-natural pest control product. That that's worked really well too. So yeah, I, I've I've got nothing but um but love for their uh, for their their products. I really 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 like them. Um, you know, before I was using Miramichi Green, I was using some of the um, like I was using Carbon Pro G, which is a product that they make for Lesco. And then I was also using as a liquid Carbon Pro L, which is made by a different formulator. Um, that's not made by Miramichi Green. But then the the big issue with that um, Earth Trimmers is that the only way to get that is at site one, right? So not everybody has a site one nearby. Not everyone wants to go to a site one. So Miramichi Green, um, you know, agreed to allow this to be available for shipment, um, you know, to anywhere in the country. Which is why um, after using their products, testing them out, and getting good results. I, I opted to go this route. So yeah, you won't you will not be disappointed. Um, they're really really good stuff. I think you're gonna. I think you'll be uh, you'll be pleasantly surprised. So hopefully that that helps. All right, Demir says uh, Alex B. I appreciate it. Glad Ron had me on. It was a good time. Yeah, man, absolutely. You definitely got to come back on again. It was a, it was a fun time. And I am glad the hat made it a uh, uh, quality product. It looks great. Thanks again. You're very very welcome. You can never know, man, because I do a decent job trying to pack things and. You know, you turn it over to the postal service, and I, I really, here's the thing: I know they're really busy. They got a lot going on, especially this time of year. But I've had, um, if you see some of the emails I get from people where uh, you know stuff that's packed very well gets damaged in shipment and whatnot, it's uh, you know I've always got to cross my fingers when I put something in the mail to you guys, and hoping that it gets there in uh, in one piece. Uh, very, very, very good stuff. All right, um, yeah, so there you go, um, er, um, Earth Trimmers. Yeah, th th this code will, again, it's not gonna work now, it will work Friday. This time next week is when it will, um, it'll kick off. And I'll, I'll do another post about it. I'll have some social media going out to remind you guys, but just because you guys are in the inner circle, y'all show up and come hang out and we do Turf Talk stuff, you guys get to find out before like the masses do, so very, very cool. Um, prep for 2022 army worms. Appreciate your show. That's a good question, DW Davis. Um, what I'm going to be using is, is a Celeprin G. I'm just going to be putting down that insecticide. Um, I had really good results putting it down, um, you know, in, when did I do it? I did it in late March of this year. I had no problems with army worms in my lawn. Uh, neither did Alex. So I'm just going to rinse and repeat again for this upcoming season. A Celeprin G is what I'm going to roll with. Um, you know, going for, for next year, for next season. So I'll do a Celeprin G in um, March timeframe, and then I will do my preventative fungicide um, using Headway in May, June timeframe. So that's going to that's gonna be my um, my plan for next year. Again, it worked worked very well for keeping the, um, the army worms at bay, and I would highly, highly recommend to you guys, if you guys had issues with army worms in your lawn, um, you know, a Celeprin G is an excellent product. That's what I'd recommend. But but put something down. You you know you know do something to prevent this from being a problem. Because with army worms, by the time you see them, 
um, or you start seeing the damage, it's it's oftentimes too late because they can they destroy turf very, very quickly. So best thing to do is just to prevent them in the first place. And um, a cellar print does a really, really good job um, of that. So um, if you are interested in that uh, DW Davis, I will get, um, I'll give you a link to that here. I think I've got one. Yep, I do. Um, right here. So you can, um, so you can grab that. One, again, one treatment um, in March, and is is all I did all of this season, and it uh, it worked it worked really really well. So I can't I can uh, I can't say enough um, can't say enough about it. Let's see. So at D W Davis. Yep, and there you go. That's the insecticide. Okay, great. Um, and then uh, Demir says, yeah, I think there's I think there's a good chance it will happen. Yeah, man. Yeah, he'll definitely be on again. Are you kidding? Awesome. Yeah, it was it was a it was a great time. It was a great time. And then uh, uh, M, let's see, let's, we've got a question here. MHMP69 um, says, uh, is there any time of year to not do a soil test? Huh, is there time time not to do a soil test? Time of year, not so much as um, if you've put in any, uh, if you've been putting any inputs into the soil. So let's say you just, you fertilize your, you put like put down fertilizer in your lawn, like doing a soil test right after doing that, like, you know, a week right afterwards would not be the best idea because you could skew the results. Um, so really, I'd only say only around applications. So if you, in my case, um, because the spoon feeding program that I do, I, um, I fertilize monthly. I do a light application monthly. Um, what I did is my soil test over the summer, for example, um, I did that one in, I put, I put it down, I, put, I did the soil test or I did my, my last fertilizer application in the beginning of the month. And I waited till the beginning of the following month to get to like my, my soil samples. Uh, that seemed to work fairly well for me. You just want to make sure there's enough distance, um, in between your, um, in between whenever you do your, your, your soil testing to make sure that you're not, again, you're not skewing the results. If you guys are interested in seeing that, um, just with see the seeing the results of that, I can show you here really quickly. Um, so let's see if I go to this is my soil my my soil portal here. This is one another good reason to go with my soil for your soil testing because you it, they keep all your soil test results. You can always go dig them up. Um, but yeah, if you look at the fall and um, and summertime, and we compare those two, you can see how um, what I was mainly after on my, my um, summer application, my June application was adjusting pH. Cause I, I, uh, I saw where my pH was and I was like, eh, you know, it's, it's still fine, but I'd like to see how, you know, if I do a full rate application, like a 40 pounds per thousand um, application of dolomitic lime, um, can I, you know, will, will I, will I raise pH? Will my pH come up? Will that be reflected in the soil test results a few months later? So I decided to do the experiment and see, and as you can see here, the dark blue is, um, like where I was before. And then this, uh, this lighter blue was October 11th of, uh, of this year. So three, you know, four, four months later, you can see the, um, the results being reflected there. So, so yeah, I mean, um, if the ground is frozen, obviously if it's a block of ice, you can, can be kind of hard to get a, to get a core then, but not really. There's not really a time that I could say um, you can't do one um, other than you just want to be mindful of any any fertilizer that you've put into the, you've recently applied that could skew your results. You know, as long as you give it four weeks or so, um, in my testing, that seemed to work fairly well. So hopefully that helps. Great question. Is And if you've not done one, it's, a, it's one of the best things you can do at least everyone should do it at least once, at least once, um, just so you can, you know, you know, what, what you need to be putting in your lawn. Otherwise you're just kind of, you know, just, just throwing down, you're just, you're spraying and praying and hoping for the best. And there's people that get away with that. But I mean, if you really want to optimize things, soil testing, I mean, one of these soil test kits is like 30 bucks. It's like $30, right? And you get data that you can get, uh, you know, you can, that, that can influence your applications over the entire season. So it's a really good investment. Um, you know, when you, factory in which you spend on fertilizers and other products. So something to consider. All right. Uh, next up, we have um, Patrick in Texas. He says, um, I've been thinking about next year's strategy. Is there anything you plan on changing next year? And or will there be any changes to the Academy calendar schedule or products? Um, I need I will need to update the calendar here soon because 2021 is coming to an end, obviously. So I'll need to do that. As far as products goes and applications, not really. I think, um, you know, the, the results, 
uh, based on the rates that are on the calendar, uh, worked well. I mean, you guys, I'm, I've got some feedback from you guys, and everyone, you know, for the most part, I, I've gotten um, positive feedback on um, on the rates that I list on the calendar and the rates that we talk about on the on the Facebook group. So I don't really see a need to adjust that. Um, so no, nothing really um, jumps out that um, that I can think will be altered for next for next season. Um, but yeah, Patrick, you're in the in the private Facebook group, man. Just hit me up, you know, and let me know if you have any ideas or things that you'd like to change up, or things that you think could be done differently. And we'll we can definitely we can hash it out and uh, and and you know brainstorm it together. But I'm pretty happy with with the results that I I saw across the board with people using the calendar uh, currently as is. But again, always open to suggestions. All right, and Papa Moe's Low says, can't wait on the Miramichi sale uh, for awesome products. Yeah, definitely load up, man, because the thing is, the Miramichi Green products are already uh, priced fairly aggressively as is. So for them to knock off another 10%, um, you know, I, I, I definitely asked them, said, hey, listen, you know, the the the, the tribe, the folks, they're asking for, for something. They're asking for some love over Black Friday. What can we do? So they they had their meeting, they had their powwow, and they said, yeah, we can do this, and we, we worked it out, and... Uh, so you guys get to benefit. But again, it's only, it's literally the 26th through the 30th. So like on the 30th, like uh, December 1st, um, it's it's over. So you know, if, you're, if you're eyeing anything, you're eyeing, you know, Essential G, you're eyeing any of the, uh, the, the Golf Horse Long Carbon Kit, any of those products, definitely uh, take advantage of that. So good, good stuff. All right, DeGees is up next. He says, hey, Ron, looking forward to buying Humic Max this week. These live streams are the best. Thank you, sir. I really, really do appreciate it. Humic Max is um, has been very, very well received. I mean, you know, Lebanon really hit a home run with that product. Again, it's uh, the response that I've gotten on my lawn this year has been really good. Uh, and uh, you know, again, look at look at um, you guys want to say. I mean, don't look at my lawn. So you guys will say, well, it's your, of course it's your lawn. You're always babying your lawn. Your lawn should look good. But like, look at Daryl's lawn, man. I'm gonna bring him up here again. I mean, Daryl's lawn. I don't care who you are. That's that's um. I mean that that's clean. That looks really really good. And that literally what you're seeing there. That is Humic Max. That's Turfplex, and that is the Miramichi Green Carbon Kit, and lots of mowing, obviously. But that literally Daryl like followed the. You know he's a member of the Golf Course Lawn Academy. He followed um, you know the the program you know to a T, and the results are uh, you know pretty incredible. So I don't really see a need to really change that up. That looks that looks pretty good to me. <laughs> it looks pretty good to me. Um, but yeah, definitely take advantage of it, DGs. Um, while the sale's running, get it. You know, load up on it while you can. All right. Uh, Victor Stams uh, is as a question here. He says, um, uh, hey, Ron, uh, great to hear you dropping science. Question. Uh-oh, here we go. So see, he, they, they build you up and then they're going to throw a tough one at you. We'll see, see what he's got for me. He says, my, my yard is turf type uh, fescue or, or yeah, turf, I guess it's fescue. I want to convert to Kentucky bluegrass through repetitive aeration and overseed. One, is this even possible? Um, how soon after aeration can I air it again? That's a great question. I don't know the answer to that. Um, so you're saying you, so you're wanting to aerate and just keep aerating and overseeding and aerating and seeding and overating and seeding and and in hopes that you'll get rid of the fescue and replace it with Kentucky bluegrass. I don't know if that's going to work, man. I mean, what you what you can do is if you're going to start mowing um shorter mowing the um the 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 fescue a lot shorter because Kentucky bluegrass can tolerate being cut shorter than fes than tall fescue can i mean that's going to put the the fe the kbg at a, at a competitive advantage over the fescue that might allow it to spread a bit more um but let's see let's see what else actually you know what look look at here demers in the comments and he has thoughts on the matter so let's see what the that what he has to say he says you know Victor stems i'd aerate and verticut in the spring and fall and oversee with Kentucky bluegrass at 1.5 pounds per thousand, do this again in the fall. If weather is good, do a light dethatch in midsummer and add one pounds per thousand. That's part one. Part two is careful about getting it too thick and causing a choking out of seedlings that have already popped up. Spring and fall will probably be best. So there you go. There's a man that's going to give you that's giving you the recipe on how to um, how to go about doing what you're doing, uh, what you're what you're after. I would also say, you know, if you can lower that mowing height, I don't know if you have a real mower or not, but if you can also begin mowing the, the KBG at a height of cut that it likes, that it can tolerate, that, that's also um, less less friendly to tall, to turf type tall fescue. Uh, that's another thing you can do as well. But yeah, um, Demir spelled it out for you uh, in a nutshell. He gave you the entire program. So hopefully that uh, that helps. And then he says, how soon, your question is, how soon can I uh, aerate again? Um, I mean, I think what 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 um, what Devin uh, listed there, 
I imagine it's gonna. He didn't listen there. He didn't necessarily um, list aeration. Uh, I guess both times, but I mean, you could if you wanted to, you could aerate monthly, right? It depends on on what you're what it is you're trying to accomplish. But I don't think this is necessarily required to get good results with um, with seeding. You know, if you remember what what um, what, uh, what Demir said last week on the live stream, like again, this is a guy that that works for, works on golf courses for a living. Like like that's what he, that's what he does. And on his own home lawn, which looks really good, and I don't have any, but I have them. I have them, but they're on the other um, thing. Can I show that? Let me see if I can do this and not mess this up. Let's see if I'm. I'm gonna probably make a mistake here and mess this up. Okay, so, um, it, so on his lawn, which is like that, that is his lawn. Um, he doesn't. He doesn't um, like uh, aerate or do do a lot of the a lot of the prep work. Literally, he said he might he might um, scarify the lawn and then throw the seed down. So he doesn't go through a lot of the crazy prep that you hear um, people talking about doing when it comes to seeding. So, um, so yeah, hopefully that helps. His answer was, re was really good. I would just follow that spring, fall, and, uh, and let us know how it works out, man. Let us know how it goes. All right, and Lois just says she's doing spicy curry shrimp and brown rice. Very healthy, sounds very healthy. Um, the shrimp, I'm, I mean, I'm not a huge seafood man, uh, not a huge seafood person, but I mean, I'm sure that's good. And then brown rice, also very good, so. Good job, good job, Lewis. Hopefully it turns out good. All right, uh, next up we have Omar Tovar says, hello, Ron, love the channel. I live in Dallas, Texas. Is it too late to lay down pre-emergent? So <laughs> it's not the optimal time to do it. It's not too late, but I mean, if you're, you know, if, if, with you being in Dallas, I'm assuming that you have um, warm season grass. So you have like Bermuda or something. This time of year, if you're, if you're waiting this late in the year, I would go with something like coastal. I wouldn't go with a straight prodiamine because at this point, if you've not done any pre-emergent over the fall, like in September, which is really the time when you want to start putting pre-emergent down, um, uh, you already are getting some germination of like um, of POA. You're getting some like, so, so annual bluegrass is already starting to germinate. Whether you see it as yet or not, it's there. So something like coastal, which I was talking about earlier, is a um, is a great option for someone that is um, you know you're a little bit late in in getting that done. So if I can if I can pull this up here real quick, can find it for you. Um, this is a great a great option because not only not only does it have the prodiamine in it, which is going to help um, prevent new growth, but it also um, has um, some two post two post emergence as well. So you got the um, simazine and a mazaquin, both of which will kill um, uh, any any grass or undesirable grass or weeds that have already germinated. So if you're waiting this late in the season, and again, I'm assuming you have Bermuda or, or Zoysia, you know, some kind of warm season turf, if that's the case, then coastal, uh, this is the one that I would I would go with. Again, it's not not super cheap, but again, it's a, um, you know, like, like, like I always tell, like I always tell you guys, you know, doing pre-emergent at the time of year when you're supposed to do pre-emergent, is the cheapest way outside of just you know regular mowing practices it's the cheapest way to keep weeds away as far as like using herbicides once you stare outside of that it gets more expensive right so like a, a you know a bottle of prodiamine like this which will treat 6000 square feet of um of bermuda is like 21 22 dollars but now you see after the fact um it gets more expensive with the, with the coastal but given the given the time of year uh, that you were dealing with now, Omar, um, and if you haven't done anything yet, coastal is what I would uh, I would go with. Um, I'll put a link here for it, and then I'll also give you a link to the video that I did that shows you how to mix it. The long short is the uh, the rate you're going to want to go with is around um, or just under 1.5 fluid ounces per thousand square feet. You can take 1.5 fluid ounces of the product. Um, mix it with a gallon of water and apply that over um, a thousand square feet. So I will also, um, I'll give you a link to Coastal and then also find that video on my channel that shows you how to mix it, how to mix it, how to apply it. Talks about the spray tip that I use and all that fun jazz, um, how to use. Um, and that video there. So between those two, should be good to go. It is late, realistically. Um, you want to, you would have want to get your, your pre-emergent down in September-ish for the fall, and then for the spring, um, I'm a fan of doing it like in early, like late February, early March, March time frame. This past year, we tested doing it super early, like early February, late January, and it worked out just fine. But you know, late February, early March time frame is a good time to get that done in the spring. So hopefully uh, that helps. Hopefully that helps. 
helps out. All right, um, next up, let me roll down here. We got a super chat. Let me go get this one from Travis. Thank you so much, Travis. I appreciate you, sir. Super chat, or see He says, ever so gently hit that like button. Yeah, most definitely, guys. I mean, we're not quite at the top of the hour yet, but I'll have a sip of my lemonade. And if for the 68 of you or so that are hanging out in the live stream, if you guys wouldn't mind touching that like button ever so gently, it's, it's totally free for you guys to use. It's a great way to support the channel. It doesn't cost you anything. And it gives me a time to take a sip of my limonada. Mm. Now tonight, guys, I'm doing a blend. So I had some Chick-fil-A um, lemonade left over. So I'm doing half Milo's, half Chick-fil-A. So it's a, it's a premium blend. It's a premium blend of lemonade tonight. It's good stuff. All right, um, so again, G-Free's in the house. It's Stripe Action Gang. What's going on, G-Free? I appreciate you. And then next up, we got Adrian E has a question about weeds in their Xeon Zoysia. It says, hey, Ron, my Xeon Zoysia is full of weeds. Should I use post and pre-emergent now and try to get rid of it, or should I wait till spring? I live in Atlanta, thanks. I would, the same advice I just gave, um, that I just gave to Omar is what I would give to you. Yeah, coastal is what I would put down. So I would still put something down now because they're still, if left unchecked, the problem's only gonna get worse. So I would um, I would go with coastal. That's going to give you a pre-emergent that's going to prevent future like more stuff from germinating, and the the two post-emergent herbicides in it um, are going to knock back the weeds that you that you're currently dealing with. So it's like it's like a two in one. It might not get everything, but um, it's definitely going to put you in a better position than you would be had you not done anything until springtime. Uh, trust me, I've seen like when you walk around here, walk the neighborhood in the spring. You can see the neighborhoods where, or the the lawns where people didn't do any pre-emergent, and the, I tell you, the poa just ravages it. it it's, it's um, you, you think that they 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 overseed their lawn with like a ryegrass or something because it's it's green, it's got poa all throughout it. So I would not wait till spring to do something to to try and take the edge off of um, cool season weeds. I would do something like coastal. And again, if you look in the chat down the chat, you'll see um, both a video and a link to where you can pick it up. So hopefully, hopefully that helps. All right, we have a super chat from Merrill. Thank you so much, Merrill. Super chat, receive. He says, happy Friday, Ron. Everyone, thank you for the Black Friday uh, day sale. Just ordered four bags of Lebanon turf and super excited to try it out next spring. Thanks, you're very, very welcome, Merrill. Here's the thing, you were the, you were the, uh, the impetus for that, right? Because I was thinking, eh, do I really need to do a sale? I mean, you know, it's, it's the end of the season. But then you, I mean, for several weeks or on the live stream, you kept asking, when's the Black Friday sale coming? I said, you know what? I owe it to you guys. Let me see what I can do as far as you know, reaching out with um, my partners and seeing what we can we can work out to uh, to save you guys some coin on some really good products. And thanks to you and your persistence, and you know they or them agreeing, now you guys can get it. So I appreciate I appreciate you uh, for uh, for keeping on me, so keeping me honest. And then uh, and also Merrill, again, you got the Lebanon turf. Make sure to also take advantage of the Miramichi Green, which is going to be available starting next Friday um, with the discount code MGreen10. That is the one, um, that's the code that's going to be, is gonna get you 10% off of everything in the golf course lawn store that is made by the nice folks at Miramichi Green. So I appreciate you, sir. Thanks again for the super chat and for all the support. All right, Victor Stems is thanking Devin again. Says, thanks again, Devin. Great to see you all, my friend. Uh, lawn Journeys, going on Lawn Journeys. Good evening, Ron, what's going on? Hopefully you guys are doing, uh, doing well. And then Adam, <laughs> Adam, I told I told Adam, hey man, you got you got your, your new Jacobson electric mowers. Go online and just look at it. There's got to be someone's done a video on it, of course. And he's like, I'll let you guys know. There are basically zero info on the electric versions. Two videos online of guys mowing. So, well, at least they, they show you that it cuts grass, right? Um, but here's the thing, Adam. If you've got an iPhone, you can be that guy. Here's the thing, you can be that guy. You know, your job now is to break out your iPhone or break out your, your Android or whatever you got and shoot a video of it. Shoot a video of saying, hey guys, I just got these two mowers and you know I didn't find any content online about it. So as I learn about them, we're all gonna learn about it together. So I'll make some mistakes along the way. Don't hold it against me, but I'm gonna you know put this out there so you guys to be able to see what I learned about these mowers. So if someone else buys one, you guys won't have to go through what I went through. And I promise most of the viewers, most people that you deal with um, will be more than appreciative of that. And then you'll have, you'll be like, you'll be the guy that gets to put something on the internet that's never been put on the internet before. Think about that. I mean, that's pretty hard to do these days. So I would uh, I would look at it as an opportunity for sure. I would I would go for it. All right, we got another super chat down here from um, the Wind Chariot. Thank you so much, sir. Appreciate you. Super chat received. Thanks for all the uh, the love and support. 
And definitely, Adam. Yeah, let me know. Let me know if I could help with anything else. But unfortunately, I don't have I don't have one of those mowers, or else I would make a video for you on it. Kevin Sheehan is in the house. He says, "Hey, Ron, uh, how's it going? All is good here. I'm glad to hear it, Kevin." Um, got, yeah. So, Kevin, didn't you? I thought you were dealing with something in your lawn, or um, I th I'm trying to be, if it's if it's you. There's there's two of you guys that have motorcycles, and it's either you or another gentleman that like um, did a renovation in one of their one of their parts of the lawn. They were dealing with some weed issues. I think it was either last week or the week before. Um, I'm not sure which one of you guys it was, but I think I think it's you. Um, hopefully, that's doing better now. Um, but if not, let us know and we can see what we can do to, uh, to help out, see what we can do to help out. And then, um, Vic Demir says, no problem. Victor Stams, good luck with the overseed. Remember, just be patient with the Kentucky bluegrass. You know, that's it, KBG. Um, you know, it's, it, it's, um, Zoysia. Uh, if, if KBG is anything like Zoysia, um, patience is definitely the order of the, uh, definitely the operative word. Like literally I did, Ryegrass, which grows like a weed. And I don't know why anyone calls Bermuda a weed. Like ryegrass is a weed. That stuff germinates super quickly and fills out really, really quickly. Um, but when I did three planters and did a test to see like, you know, germination rates and the um, ryegrass in just a couple of days, like four days, I started seeing, you know, baby ryegrass coming out. The Bermuda, the Arden 15, about nine days, nine, 10 days, I started seeing some germination. The Zoysia, it was like, it took its sweet time, man. It was, it was all of like three weeks before you started seeing any goat come through. And it took, it took the better part of like two and a half months for that planter to fill in. I mean, it looks, it looks good now, but it took a while for it to fill in. So if KBG is anything like Zoysia as far as germination, like just be patient. Patience is definitely the operative word. Just put it down, water it. And just uh, and wait, give it time because it, it definitely takes a long time to um, to grow in. All right, uh, next up we got Mike Harvey in the house. He says, "Hey Ron, I have a buddy that just bought a house and and the lawn needs serious help. He's looking to go big box store for cost reasons. Okay, gotcha. He says, "What suggestions do you have for a weed killer?" Okay. Um, you didn't tell me what part of the country you're in, Mike, but I'm going to assume that you are like my neighbor here in Georgia. You're somewhere in the Southeast United States and that we are dealing with warm season turf. So if that's the case, like probably one of the best bangs for the buck, man, as far as like, uh, as far as a herbicide goes is, uh, the Spectricide uh, line of products. So, um, I'm not sponsored by Spectricide. I don't make a dime by telling you guys to use this, but it's just really good stuff. Um, given what it costs, like it, it's definitely a product that punches well above its weight. So what I'm talking about is this here, which is their weed stop product. Um, so if he has warm season grass, uh, like Bermuda, and not, here's the thing, it's not all warm season. So if he has Bermuda or Zoysia, uh, this guy is the one you can go with, the, um, the, the orange label bottle. Uh, this stuff, what it is, it's really a blend of several different herbicides. So you got some 2,4-D, some quinclorax, some dicamba, some sulf sulfentrazone. Um, so it's like a, think of it as almost kind of like coastal, but like a consumer coastal that doesn't have pre-emergent in it. So it's like a blend of, um, of, of herbicides that tend to work very well and control it, as you can see from the label, uh, 470 uh, weeds. So a lot of um, a lot of coverage out of this one product. And if he has, say, like St. Augustine or Centipede or some other grass types, if we just back up here a little bit, uh, they have other options as well. I want to say the purple, let me make sure, I forget, yeah. So the purple bottle is also, um, also done by, uh, by Spectricide. The purple bottle um, is, I think it's Atrazine is what this is. Yes, Atrazine, and that is safe for St. Augustine and Centipede um, lawns. So depending on the kind of grass he has, um, that is a, uh, a good option. And there's also a yellow label bottle. I forget what the yellow bottle is for. We can take a look here just for completeness. The yellow is for, doesn't say trees. Yeah. So this it's for bluegrass, uh, fescue, um, and also zoysia as well. So save for that one as well. So make the first um, order of business is for him to figure out what kind of grass he has. Um, and one of those products from a spectricide should fit the bill. They should do a, a pretty good job of, uh, of taking care of, of wheezing his lawn without breaking the bank. If you're also looking for a really good channel, so you're, I mean, I love you guys watching my content, but, um, if he's not looked into uh, Bermuda grass essentials content, like BYD is all about that. Um, Michael Bowman, he's been on the, on the, uh, the live stream before his entire channel, um, is about using um, products uh, you know that are that are easily accessible at your big box stores, at your WalMarts, Home Depots, Lowe's, that kind of thing. 
Um, and he, he does a really good job. He, he covers everything from insecticides to um, weed control to pre-emergent to a bit of everything. So if you are looking for another channel to watch, in addition to mine, I mean, tell them to keep, you know, obviously watch my channel as well too. But if you're looking for someone that is um, that is that is focused on on a um, on warm season turf that is also um, looking is also uh, you know, mainly going to recommend products you can easily find locally. Uh, Bermuda Grass Central is a good option. So I'm going to put that in the chat here for you as well, Mar um, Mike. So that's your uh, that's your buddy to tell him to go give BYD some love. Um, right there, that's his channel, um, Michael Bowman, uh, Bermuda Grass Central. So hopefully that helps. Um, one cool thing too, as well, I forgot to mention uh, while we're in there, um, Spectricide also makes a granular product that has pre-emergent in it. So if he's looking for you know, I want to just say an economical way, but it's like a way to kind of do um, pre-emergent and take and, and kill some weeds at the same time. So we go back here, this bag, this product here, the uh, the crabgrass granules, this one here, uh, this this um, does 200 weeds and it also can also contains um, uh, uh, d uh, dithiopyr as the pre-emergent. So the nice thing about this is that it will kill thing um, problem weeds like crabgrass and dithiopyr when it's used and, and, and targeted at um, baby crabgrass, so very young crabgrass, even though it's a, technically a pre-emergent, it has the ability to kill those as uh, as well. So, you know, if he's looking for something in the springtime to put down, um, this is a this is a good option as well. If he's also looking for a pre-emergent as well, also big box store uh, that he can roll with. Alex used this. We used this on Alex's lawn um, uh, last year as well with really good results. This year he stepped it up to the more commercial grade stuff, but uh, but he's gotten good results out of. Uh, out of weed stop. So hopefully that helps. Uh, if anything else, let me know and we will revisit it. Uh, obviously I didn't read your next question. You said, I already have pre-emergent ready for him, but there are a lot of weeds that need to die, LOL. Yeah, so in that case, you already got pre-emergent, just go with the straight spectra side. Now here's the thing, it is a com it is a consumer um, grade herbicide, meaning like the, the concentrations of all those active ingredients is gonna be, be a bit on the lower side. So it may take a couple applications. So you may do one and then three weeks, you know, three, four weeks later, you may have to come back with another application. That's completely normal. So don't don't spray it and say, "Hey, everything didn't die in two days." Um, you know, if you want that, that's when you need to get some of the more expensive stuff um, to to use. But yeah, it, it, patience is the order is definitely the operative word when it comes to spectricide. But it does work. It is, and it's you know, that's, I think a bottle of that stuff is like ten dollars, ten fifteen bucks, depending on where you where you get it and the time of year when you get it. So hopefully that um, helps. All right, C. Math is in the house. He says, definitely late to the party this Friday, Ron. Would like to nuke some weeds on my St. Augustine lawn. Need to buy a post spray. Am I okay to spray weeds during the fall and winter, correct? You are, you are. Um, you know, as far as products, I kind of showed one already. If you're looking for something that's fairly easy to use um, and not gonna break the bank, um, the Spectricide, um, the one for St. Augustine, again, the purple, the purple uh, label bottle, the one that's got atrazine in it. We'll have to look and see. Um, yeah, so this one, it doesn't list any lower end of, um, uh, so on the lower end of the spectrum as far as uh, when you can apply it. It says don't apply it over 90 degrees. Granted, I obviously wouldn't, wouldn't spray this on your lawn if, it, if the ground's frozen or if there's ice outside. But if you can find like a warmer day, um, you know, to, to apply this, then yeah, this, this is a, a, a cost-effective way to take care of of weeds in a in a Saint Augustine uh, lawn that doesn't involve you know involve you getting you know some of the more commercial grade um, more commercial grade products. So hopefully uh, that that helps. You know one one thing for you guys. You know um, one question that I was asked earlier about what are my plans for next season. So based on some of the stuff you guys saw on the channel this year, you know I did quite a bit of content around top dressing and this kind of thing. Like how many of you? Um, are planning or considering top dressing your lawns uh, next year. So I'm trying to think about content for next season, like what you guys would like to see. Um, and I'm not sure if I need to do more stuff on top dressing. If uh, I mean, I think I've covered the, the subject. I beat it to death quite a bit this year and also last year. But you know, if you guys are gonna do do more, want to see more of that, or something that you think would be more valuable, um, like a, a niche uh, uh, around that, some more you know niche videos around top dressing. Let me know, and I can I can do some of that stuff. But kind of interested in seeing how many of you guys are planning to do any of that uh, next year. All right, uh, Alex B is up. He says Demir, good tips, definitely doable with that switch. I helped my friend convert to Kentucky bluegrass from turf type tall fescue. The fact that KBG spreads while turf type tall fescue does not definitely helps the process. So there you go. So you have two guys that have 
done it and um and you know have gotten good results obviously so uh so yeah good luck good luck with the uh, with the renovation project sir should be a uh, sounds like a lot of fun all right um next up um the wind chair says uh, good evening guys i loaded up on cubic max who knows what inflation will do to our price of products next year you're not lying man i mean everything is um everything is getting a lot more expensive i mean gas is gas is crazy expensive um it's uh yeah everything everything is cost is, is cost more and there's no indication that it's going to cost less anytime soon so you know fertilizer is one of those things that you can stockpile as long as you got a cool and dry place to keep it so while it's on sale uh definitely uh definitely take a um you know a uh take advantage of it <laughs> take advantage of it for sure all right, next up, we got a question from Paul Jackson. Um, I'm not sure what the question is. He says, do your videos ever get cut? Um, IOL, I'm not sure what that means. Do they ever get cut? Um, I don't know what you mean, Paul. Um, do they ever get cut as in, do they get, do, you, do they get shorter or do they get cut out? I mean, I, most of like a lot of the content on my channel is like most of my, my, my video videos, not like my live streams are shorter. Like most of, most of those, I tend to keep them uh, yeah, under 10 minutes when I can, I tend to, you know, not, not put any fluff in them that I can't. Um, but yeah, the live streams are just free form. They just, they go as long as they go. Um, tonight will probably be shorter because there's not a whole lot of you guys and not a ton of questions and, uh, but we'll see, but yeah, no, I'm not sure. I'm not sure what you're asking, but if you can clarify it, I will revisit it, uh, Paul. So thanks for, uh, for, for chiming in. All right, um, um, Alex and, and Winchard are going back and forth. He says, I did the same. I had a bit of Humic Max left over for the next season, but jumped on another bag, especially with that amazing sale. Yeah, man, 35% off. Believe me, that was not easy to do. Um, it, it's hurting me. You know, it definitely hurts me to, um, to sell it at that price, but you know, you guys, are, you guys are, are, are taking advantage of it. I want you guys to use the product because also too, I want, to, I want the sales to really be there because here's the thing. I'm eyeing some other stuff from Lebanon Turf and you know, for that to for that to happen, we have to be able to show that we can you know we can move a lot of the um, a lot of the products that we have. So it's gotten a really good response, really good result this year, but it can always be better. So uh, so yeah, I'm, I'm, I definitely want you guys to take advantage of it uh, all as much as possible, so that you guys can you know you'll, you'll be good to go for for next season. You'll be good to go for next season because you never know, <laughs> you never know. All right, uh, Robert Mohorez is in the house. He says, um, Robert Mohoros, um, is, he says, hey Ron, looking forward to a good show tonight. My last mow with a 2500 flex, looking forward to a project on how to best put away mowers. Hint, good, good point. Um, so, you know, it's funny, you you say that, Robert. I also was told that today by someone else who said, hey, listen, you know, why don't you talk about like what you're doing as far as, um, you know, you're winterizing your equipment and what, just all that. So that is my plan for this weekend to shoot that piece of content and get it out to you guys um, early next week. That's the plan uh, to show to, to show that off. Uh, I I did a, I mowed ooh, when did I mow three days ago? Three days ago with the Greensmaster, um, and I I might get another one in. I'm I'm trying to decide whether I want to do one more mow before I send it off to get um, freshened up. Um, but uh, we'll we'll see. I'll probably mow one more time be first part of December, and then then I'll send the uh, the Greens Master the Greens Master off. But yeah, I'll, what I'm going to do is I'm, I'm what I plan to do in the video is um, show you guys what I'm going to do as far as the, my maintenance routine, things to look out for on some of the equipment and some of the like my spreader that I'm using, some of the lawn care equipment that I use, uh, and just in general, just talk about talk about that kind of stuff. So you guys are interested in that, um, you know, what to do in the off season while you got some downtime. Um, Definitely stay tuned for that because that is uh, is coming here soon. Coming here soon. I'm glad to see that I'm not the only person out mowing though in the middle of fall, Robert. I can tell you, no one else here is. Alex is done. Alex is mowing, uh, and I mow. But outside of us, you know, we're the two crazy guys in the neighborhood who are still cranking up our mowers. I think everyone else has put theirs away for the uh, for the season. We probably should be doing the same, right? Uh, you're very very welcome, M H M P. No problem at all. Always glad to help. Always glad to help. And then um, next up, um, Alex B says, not opposed to going the battery route with some equipment, already have some tools, um, but as of yet, I, f I feel like I am replacing batteries quite a bit, which ends up being expensive. See, that's the thing, I don't have any um, battery powered, um, you know, any battery powered equipment to know what kind of battery life you get out of them. I know, I mean, if cell phones are any indication, right? Like you take like a, like a modern iPhone or Android, um, 
you know, really, if you're charging it properly and you're, you're, you're like you're managing the battery properly, you can get easily two years out of a phone. Um, I mean, the phone itself will last, will run longer than that. But as far as like two years without any major degradation in um, like how well the phone holds a charge and this kind of thing. For long care, um, I don't know if that same if the same like level of, of quality of batteries that that are used like in a consumer electronics, like cell phones, laptops, that kind of thing, are used in um, like in power equipment. Um, I wouldn't think. I don't know. I, I would imagine so because you know they they probably have the ability to buy that stuff at you know at at, at, at in enough scale that they should be able to get pretty good pricing on it. But um, but yeah, yeah, Alex. I mean, the big thing for me is the the only piece of battery powered equipment I have are my backpack sprayers. And because like the, um, both the flow zone and the yard mastery sprayer, I can literally get, um, you know, I did what I did. I did like six tanks full, six, um, how many, how many tank fulls did I do with that? I, I did a bunch of, I did a bunch, I did a test in that video. I forget exactly how many, I, how many tank fulls I ran through it, um, without any like drop in pressure or anything like that. With those units, even if I forget to charge them right after the last time I used it, they tend to have enough juice to where I can still get another run out of them. I don't know if that's still the case for things like, um, like string trimmers or like if you have like a multi-tool like my combi system like you have like a, a multi-tool i don't know if if you didn't charge that how well it would uh it would work I, I did see a video from alex um not alex from um alan um alan hayne lawn care nut it was it was this season when he was doing work at the um the is it, was it the freedom factory or freedom park the 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 cletus mcfarland cletus is um his racetrack now, granted, that's a huge property, but when he showed up there to go work on that with the Toro products he had, he had like a he had a couple of batteries, he had a few batteries um, to switch out for that. So, you know, I don't know if that's any indication of um, of what you can expect, but yeah, I, I have not jumped on the train as yet. Uh, someday, I'd like to own an electric real mower. I like a, I'd love to get me a, a Greens Master that is electric, that's battery powered, but um, not not quite there uh, as yet. All right, next up we got Pirate2031. Uh, he says, Ron, thanks for the great deal on Humic Max. Amazing, you're very, very welcome, sir. I'm glad that you guys um, are taking advantage of it. I I believe that is the best pricing you can find anywhere. I think there's a couple other places, you know, I don't think you can get it um, any cheaper anywhere else on the internet um, than that. the pricing that's currently on the golf course lawn store at, I think it's 40, what is it, $44.99, $45 a bag. So it's a really, it's a really, it's a really good price. On the uh, on that product, believe me, I'm not I'm not making much money on it um, at that price. But you know, you guys are you guys are taking advantage of it. So that's that is uh, that's all good. It's all good, all good. All right, Omar Tovar says thanks for the info. You're very very welcome, um, Omar. You're very welcome. And then uh, next up, we got LG with a, well, not next up, but LG with a super chat. I'm gonna drop one in here. Super chat received. It says, driving home from the airport, so I can't say much right now, but I still wanna sponsor the 7 p.m. sip. Oh, last um, item of business, do more giveaways. So more giveaways. I mean, last week we gave like like three, actually it was supposed to be four hats, but the, the person never claimed it. So I still actually have, do I still have it? I still have the one of the hats that was supposed, that's supposed to be um, sent out. So um, yeah, this guy, this one didn't get shipped because the person never sent me their email address. They never thinged it. So maybe, actually what we could do is maybe, what we'll do is, um, you know, the video from not this week where Dev, the one that Devin was on, but the one from last week, maybe at the end of the show tonight, I'll revisit that one and I'll just do another one. We'll just send this hat out because it was supposed to get given away, but the person that won it never emailed me, never, you know, never, so the hat is still here. So it's still up for grab. So LG, you might have a chance. I think you're already entered anyway, so you might have a chance to uh, to win it. So um, for any of you guys that um, want to have a shot at this, um, you know, kind of an impromptu giveaway, um, the, the live stream you need to look at is the one that has, um, it says, uh, buh, 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 buh. it's the one that has golf, golf course lawn, little golf course lawn, uh, fall lawn care with a picture of my front lawn. Um, it's the one from November 5th. November 5th, that's when you need to comment on. On that one, you'll see, um, I think people are commenting, iron sharpens iron. I think that's the comment that is, um, that is, um, that's in there, but put down any comment and you're entered. So we'll, we'll let that run for a little bit. And then later on here, maybe another 30 minutes or so, we'll do a giveaway and maybe when you guys will have a chance to win this. All the people that have already won last week, so Alex, Dwayne, Kevin, you guys are not eligible. The only people that have not won can uh, have a chance to win the two-tone, the two-tone hat, so. Um, so there you go, LGZ. Ask and you shall receive. And I think I will take you up on that. I'm gonna have a sip of my lemonade here during the um, 
the eight o'clock hour, eight o'clock my time. Oh, mm. good stuff. That's the worst part about scrolling. I miss where I was, and then I get a nasty message saying, you forgot my question, man. So I try and make sure I get back to the same spot. Uh, thank you so much, Begonias444. I appreciate you. Thank you so much for the like. I do appreciate it. And then next up, we got Higgy Pop from Cumming, Georgia. It says, hey, Ron, Cumming, Georgia. Bermuda grass rotary cut. In error, I cut the lawn at the lowest setting. What should I do? Wait. Nothing, nothing at this point. Um... Yeah, there's nothing to do really. You can't, I mean, we can't, we can't, it's not going to grow this time of year. Um, the thing is with a rotary, you said a rotary. So with a rotary, I imagine you got down to what, an inch, maybe three quarters of an inch. Um, the good news is the Bermuda will be just fine with that. I mean, my air in my lawn, I've done it um, like last year was at 0.75 all throughout the winter. You're probably going to, you're probably at that height or slightly a bit taller. So you should be good to go um, as far as, as far as that shouldn't be, um, Shouldn't be a problem. The nice thing with us being in Georgia, and again, you know, watch, I'm gonna jinx this here now, right? Is that we tend to have fairly mild winters. Like if we get snow, it's, you know, one, two days, um, maybe over the course of the winter. So, you know, that's, we don't have, we don't have like a, a situation where, you know, temperatures drop down to, um, you know, in, into the teens and stays there for days on end. So, uh, so yeah, you should be, should be fine, um, Higgy Pop. Bermuda's pretty hardy anyway, but, uh, but yeah, nothing, nothing you can really do at this point other than just wait for spring to roll around, man, unfortunately. So, um, but yeah, look at this way. You got your, you got your headset on your scalp for next year. That's, that's a positive, right? Next up, we got Thin Cut saying, evening, Ron, happy Friday. Happy Friday, uh, Thin Cut. Thanks for coming to hang out. I do appreciate you. Thanks for coming to, to, to hang out a little bit. And um, if you've not, like, again, I, I was telling you, um, for last week's video, the one, um, last week's video, um, go, go check it out because, or not last week, but the weeks before last, if you've not put a comment on that one, go comment because you have a chance to win a hat. We're only going to be doing that, just the hat. Um, what else do I have? Maybe I can do a couple of stickers too. We'll see. Um, but but yeah, go do that if you want to have a chance to win um, you know, this hat. Just an impromptu giveaway because this was supposed to go last week and it didn't. So there, uh, there you go. And actually, I can show you guys really quick just to make sure that you guys are going to the right one. Um, just look at the comments. In the comments, you'll see a bunch of... Um, you'll see a bunch of comments that'll say like iron sharpens iron and, and that type of thing. So um, it's the one where I'm wearing, I'll cut over here real quick. It's this one here where I'm wearing, get my face off of here. It's the one where I'm wearing a gray shirt. Um, that one is the one you need to be commenting on. As you can see, the comments are like iron sharpens iron. This, so this is the one, this is the video from November 5th. That's the one you need to be commenting on if you wanna have a chance to win um, the hat tonight because I didn't get to go out last week. So, so there you go. There you go. See, good. You never know what I can, you, you can, can happen if you come hang out and just talk about turf, right? You can, uh, you might have a chance to just for an impromptu giveaway of a, of a, of a hat. And again, these, this is like one of one, like literally Josh Abib, um, created these and like, I don't even have one. So whoever has this, you're going to literally have one of them. There's not any, there's not any other of them in existence. So, until, unless you make some more, but there you go. You'll have something that's pretty, that's very, very limited edition. What can you able to say that? All right, uh, Wind Chariot is rubbing in my face. He says, my lawn is still fairly green here in Memphis. The Arden is holding strong. Yeah, Wind Chariot. So the only parts of my lawn that do still have some green, like the color still looks decent, is where the Arden 15 has, has, has taken fairly well. Um, but now I'm starting to see more yellow than I am green. So it is starting to fall off, so. Again, par for the course. The, the last mow that I did is what did the lawn in. Like it was still green overall throughout. Um, and this last time when I mowed it, uh, I mean, I didn't take off very much, but it was enough to where the lawn's like, okay, we're done. You're gonna still cut us like in late November. We're checking out. We'll see you in springtime, sir. And that's that's what happens. So now when I look at it now today, it's uh, the front lawn still looks pretty good, but the back lawn is got, uh, it's looking a lot more yellow. So maybe, maybe tomorrow morning, I'll do like a quick story, YouTube story. You guys can check it out and can see um, can see what I'm talking about, but yeah. All right. Next up we got, um, Alex, um, Alex B is talking about the patience required for Kentucky bluegrass. He says, uh, looks great when it gets going, but definitely requires patience. Slow to germinate often stagnates at the sprout and pout phase and tends to be slower growing coming out of winter and summer, uh, dormancy. Um, uh, yeah. Um, 
thanks, thanks for that, um, Alex. I mean, you're not the you're not the only one, and also, um, you know, as far as as being one of the more I, I don't know if, if out of the cool and grass types between Kentucky bluegrass or perennial ryegrass, which of the two is more susceptible to like um, lawn disease and whatnot? I mean, that'd be interesting. I'm not sure if Demare is still in here, but it'd be interesting to find out. Um, which of those two, or if they're, if they're the same, they might they might be equally um, you know vulnerable to the same types of um, the same types of, of diseases. So so yeah, um, let's move on to our next question. Let's see what we got here. Uh, da, 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 da. Um, Mike Havy, yeah, he's upstate um, South Carolina. He has Bermuda. Thanks for the information. Yeah, so if he's got Bermuda. Everything I was saying, orange label bottle. That's what he's going to want to roll with. Um, that should. Um, that should do the uh, do the do the trick. That should do the trick for him. So glad uh, that was helpful. All right. Um, next up, we got uh, Rockfish Steve. This is a good. This is an interesting one. He says, "Hey Ron, um, what's your question on? Uh, what's your thoughts on rolling common Bermuda? Trying to smooth bumpy lawn with a um, bumpy lawn to mow lower." Would you do this in winter when your soil gets very wet and soft? Common Bermuda, about two inches. Um, I, I don't know that I would do that during the winter time, man. I, if any, the only time I would do that is um, is whenever the grass is actually growing. Because while you may not realize it, I mean the you know the that that roller is going to introduce some kind of trauma. Is going to do some is going to do some some damage to the grass, and it'd be I would want to do that whenever it's it's um it's actively growing versus when it's dormant. Um, you know, and also I've, I've rolled my lawn. I've rolled like the vanity strip, like one time there was a, there was um, a guy in the neighborhood that had one. He let me borrow it. I didn't really care for the results that I got with it. I mean, it does tend to smooth things out a bit, but at the expense of creating compaction in the process, like, you know, like golf courses do that on greens, like Demir's in here. Like he says, they roll, they mow and they roll their greens every day, but that's a different use case, right? Because they want that to be super smooth for golf balls to roll on it. Um, but on most residential lawns, we're trying to stay away from like, or I like to stay away from things that that cause um, extra compaction. So if you're if you're trying to smoothen um, the lawn out, you know if you really want to roll it, you can do that. But I would much um, much rather steer you in the path of like doing a light top dressing or just or just using like some spot top dressing to fill in the areas that are that are uneven. Um, I think that's a better way to go than to roll the lawn because you're because you're you're not gonna it's not like it's gonna take a lawn that's very very bumpy and make it pool table smooth like that's just not that's just not gonna happen um top dressing is gonna be a better is gonna be a better method for smoothing out the lawn even with you mowing it at two inches i might get it a little bit lower when you're when you're doing the top dressing work but um i don't think that a roller is going to produce the um uh, the results that you're thinking. Um, and if you are going to do it, I would wait till springtime when the lawn is actively growing. Like, like kind of what you're saying, whenever it's the, the, the ground is a little bit softer from rain, that would be the time, but I wouldn't do it over the winter. I would wait till, I would wait till spring. I wouldn't do it right now. It's a good question. That's a, that's a good one. I have not been asked that one, um, before Frank V's in the house. He says, Hey Ron, any tips on how to get rid of mole crickets? Um, I don't really have, I'm sure there's, there's probably some insecticide that will target mole crickets. Let me um, none that really drop jump to mind. Um, let me see what do what the next folks that do my own say. They mention Talstar, Bifin, um, Advion. Advion is really good. Um, I, I've used the Advion um, Advion ant bait. That stuff is awesome. Um, I don't know how well they will work against. Actually, let me get this here. I'll pull this up. I, I don't know how well um, it will work against um, against mole crickets. Again, I've never I've never had to deal with that but I will show you some of what they recommend, not something that I've ever used before. So let me switch over here real quick. And you can see what they are, are talking about. Um, this product, Advion, again, um, I've used the Fire Ant Bait. This stuff is, is really, really good stuff. Not inexpensive, but it's gonna be really good. Um, as you can see, it's, <laughs> it's the most expensive out of, out of, um, out of any of them. Um, and then they have this Dominion, Bifen, and then Talstar. I'm not sure out of these, um, which works better than another, but those are some options for um, for mole crickets, um, according to the nice folk at at Do My Own. So look into that. Advion, I can definitely vouch for because I've I've used that um, particularly for um, taking care of ants or keeping ants out of my lawn, and that stuff is incredible. Works really really good. Again, not cheap, but good stuff. Great uh, great products. Okay, and Demir's offering some advice on those of you that are trying to grow Kentucky bluegrass um, when you get to the to the sprout and pout stage. He says, Alex B, when you hit that spout and the sprout and pout stage, 
I like to hit it with a follow your app of miners nutrient and about um, 0.07 pounds. <laughs> so seven, so seven hundredths of a pound of, of N per thousand square feet uh, with some kelp as well. I'll do that over the entire, over the whole lawn or the entire yard and it works. So you heard the man said, not 0.10, but 0.07. So um, I, I'm, I'm joking, but it means like a light, a light application. Don't go, uh, don't go crazy with it. So uh, very cool. Thanks for that, Demir. That's um, that's that's good advice, I'm sure. And, and again, you're the you're the cool season guy, so I'm sure it will. Uh, I'm sure it will definitely uh, will produce good good results. All right. Next up, Wind Chariot, uh, to my question about top dressing, he says I'm gonna top dress. I'm only gonna top dress if I can find uh, that goat aerator. Um, oh, the goat. Yeah, yeah, man. I really the um, the Billy Goat. Yeah, I really like that. Um, I've used the Ryan and I've used the Billy Goat. I really like the Billy Goat. Here's the thing. I would not say you only have to use the Billy Goat. Like that's that's the only way to only way to, to um you know to aerate your lawn. Like the Ryan does a good job too. The nice thing about the Billy Goat is that when you're moving it until you like when you pick it up from wherever you're running it from, like you, you can have it's not gonna have any water in it, and then you can literally get it to your lawn, fill it with water. So you're basically adding the weight then do your aeration and then drain it and it's easy to move around. So whereas the Ryan is, I mean, it does, I think the Ryan has weights that are removable, but it's, um, I just really like the way that Billy Goat runs too. Like I, I just, I, I prefer it compared to uh, the Ryan unit, but it, it doesn't really matter, man. It's a core aerator. I mean, it, it put punches holes in the, in the soil, pulls plugs out, whether it's got Ryan or Billy Goat or um, uh, who else makes, um, who else makes one? I think the slit seeder people also make one too. The people that do that, they're, they're known for the, um, slit seeder. It's, they're, it's red. I can see, I can see, I can see the, the, the name of the, I can see their, their brand, but I can't, I, the, the name escapes me. But anyway, it doesn't really matter which core aerator you use. The, the key thing when shared, the most important thing is when you get one, because if you, especially if you're renting one from like Home Depot or somewhere else, is to rinse it really well. Like make sure the tines are rinsed off really well before you put it on your lawn. Most, any good place um, really should be doing that before they rent it out to you. They should be rent, they should be cleaning the equipment up before they send it out again. But in case they don't, rinse it to make sure there's no, you know, you're not introducing any garbage, any potential fungus or weeds or any other problems into your lawn based on where that that uh, aerator has been. That's the only advice I'd say, but give, it a, give the lawn a good aeration. And then um, like I showed in my video on top dressing, just uh, just go to town. So um, so yeah, I wouldn't. I would not let get finding only the Billy Goat aerator hold you back from top dressing. All right, uh, Kevin D says me. Um, I will be doing a second top dressing this year. It did wonders. Did not know about it until this channel. Yeah, that's the problem with top dressing, isn't it, Kevin? Like you think you know I'm just gonna do one, one and done, and it just it just never is one and done. I keep saying you guys can. I'm I'm gonna go on record right now. Alex and I have already made a pact that um, we're not gonna be top dressing next year. I think we're gonna fail at that, but as of right now, there's no plans to top dress either lawn next year. We shall see though. We shall see. You guys are gonna be like, hey man, should make some top dressing content. And I'll be like, well, there you go. I gotta do it now, right? All right, um, Michael sees in the house. He says, hey Ron, is it too late to put down a weed control? I live in Pittsburgh and the temps are going into the 30s and 40s, thanks. It's a bit cold, man. That's a bit cold. Like, I don't know what kind of effectiveness you're gonna have. Um, for uh for you know any kind of herbicide at, at those temps um plus i'd also be i'd be uh worried about like just the like the ground i mean the ground being frozen i mean in general you sh it's 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 a bit cold it's a bit late in the season now if you can find a stretch a stretch there where it's going to be warming up like if you can find a, a week or so where the temps are going to get into the 50s and you want to throw some herbicide down then uh, go for it, but I've never sprayed herbicide on um, on any lawns when temps are that low. I, I would I would say if you already have something in mind, read the label, check out check the label out, and see what the restrictions are um, uh, around that. A lot of them will say like 45 degrees or higher. 45 degree, between 45 degrees and 90 degrees is what a lot of products will say. So 30 to 40 is definitely you know, on the lower end outside that, um, that optimal, that optimal window. It also depends on what kind of weeds you're trying to, to treat as well too, uh, Michael. So that, uh, that can weigh in as well. So, um, I, I'm going to say, wait for a stretch of weather or a string where you get like a week or so with the temps in the fifties and, and then do it. I wouldn't do it when, when things are freezing right now. All right. Uh, next up, um, Kevin D says, I'm old. So I lay the medical bills I had would have would offset uh, paying someone good vibes, have good vibes. Um, no, I, I got what you meant, Michael. I know you said lay, but it's, is it, it's late. We got, I got you. No, uh, no worries at all. No worries at all. And then Higgy pop says, he says, if you can only afford one soil test, 
Uh, a soil test one time per year. When would you do it? I would do it in the spring. I would do it around. I would do it before um, the growing season. So um, I say in the spring, um, but even even like now would probably would be optimal because really you think about it. Any deficiencies you have in the soil now are like as far as like your nitrogen levels, your, your like your macro levels are probably going to be around the same thing when springtime rolls around because um, a lot of it's not really being consumed by the grass right now. The the, the advantage of doing it now is that if you had an issue, because you being in coming um, Higgy Pop, if you had a situation where your soil pH was on the lower side, now you have a couple of months to help address that by putting some lime down and help bring that pH up into a nicer, into 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 a more into a better zone. You know, so you know you can wait till spring. That works. You could do one now. That works too. Um, but the, the nice thing about doing one now, or again, a, a couple of months from now, is that it's going to give you the information, the data that's going to allow you to, to tailor the applications um, that, you, that you put into your soil over the next season, over next, you know, 2022, which is going to ultimately result in a, in a better, better lawn. You know, you're going to use the right products at the right rates. So you're going to use less of the, which means it also means you're not going to be using the wrong products, which the byproduct is, is greener grass, right? So... Um, so yeah, now, now up and now through the spring is a good time to, um, to go ahead and do one. So hope that helps. That's a good question, man. Good, good question. And again, if you can do a second one, if you can spring for a second one, do one at the end of the season. So then you can see, Hey, I did all this stuff throughout the season. How did the soil react to it? How did it change? And that can give you inputs for the following season. So, so I guess we could say, um, late fall every year is, is, if you can only do one, that's probably the time to do it because it, it gives you the data for what happened over the previous growing season and it gives you some, some data to work with for the upcoming season. So if I only do one, that's that's the more I think about it, that's probably the time that makes the most sense. I do mine every three months, mainly because I started. And I'm not going to stop now at this point. And I just like the data to seeing, hey, if I did something, you know, how quickly can it make a, a change? How quickly can it react? Um, but yeah. Once a year uh, should work, should work just fine around this time of year. Uh, great, great uh, question. All right, um, let's see what other uh, questions we have here. Um, we got John Finley in the house. He says, I'm very much looking forward, looking into top dressing. Need more overview, soil testing. Uh, maybe saw a few of your top dressing videos. How much thickness can you add to a yard over a season? Are we burying the rhizomes? Okay. Um, so there's a lot in that to unpack. So yes, I've got several videos on top dressing, um, but we'll take some of that. Um, so soil testing, I've already just covered that in the previous question. Um, and as far as top dressing, as far as thickness, I don't like to, so the rate that I use is one yard, one cubic yard per thousand square feet. That ends up with you putting down, um, under, typically under, just under half an inch of material. And again, depends on how, how, a bump of your lawn is. But the the rate of one cubic yard per thousand square feet is a good rate that gives you good gives you enough coverage where you're not going to run out, but also prevents you from putting it down at crazy heavy to where you bury um before where to where you bury uh, bury the lawn. Uh so so there's that. You said are we burying rhizomes? Um um so the rhizomes are in that's in the roots so I mean those they're they're already on they're already underground so I wouldn't say we're necessarily um, burying them, but you are, I say this, you want to leave enough, you want to leave enough of the grass or, or this, just the tips of the grass exposed. You know, you don't want to, you don't want to beach the entire lawn. Again, there are, I, I'm saying that and there's people in the comments are going to say, oh, you can totally do that. And yes, you can. With Bermuda, you can like turn the entire lawn into a parking lot if you want to. I'm not a fan of doing that. Like, I think that you should, um, you should leave some of the grass exposed so it's going to recover faster. And another reason is that if you don't, if you do it the way I'm saying, so you do a relatively light application, so half an inch or less, um, you are also have a better chance of not losing any of the material whenever you get a heavy rain. So if you do a super heavy top dressing, you can absolutely do that. But if you get a heavy rain, because, you know, pretty much like the grass is here and you've got sand or material like top dressing blend all the way up here, there's nothing to really hold on to it, right? So the grass, believe it or not, also helps to keep the material in place. It keeps it where you where you put it. Uh, so that's another reason why I wouldn't go crazy heavy. I, I would much faster do two top dressings over the season than try and do one heavy one um, because you're just gonna lose material if it, if it rains. So that's... Uh, that's my, uh, my thoughts on the matter. And I've got, um, 
I've got a couple of videos on top dressing. You probably have, have look at the look for the ones from from this year. Um, there's a really long one, or really long by long, I mean 13 minutes or so that I did uh, that shows the entire process, soup to nuts, aerating, all that fun stuff. Um, check that one out, and that should um, that should get you everything that you need. So let me know if you need anything else, and we will uh, we'll go from there. All right. Uh, next up is Edward Isle. He says, would like to top dress using aerobic compost. Suggestions, advice. I'm not even sure what aerobic compost is. How is it, how is it different from like just regular compost? I have to do some research on that. I'm not sure, I'm not sure what aerobic compost is. I, I can tell you that I have, um, I have done a leveling, uh, a top dressing with um, a product. Uh, it's from Miramichi Green. It's their carbonized PN, which is half compost, half biochar. Um, and it works great. I got a, I got a really good result as far as like the, the color, the response from the grass from it was really, really good. Um, not the best thing for if you're, if you're looking to, to add structure though. So if you're, if you're top dressing just to feed the lawn, just to feed the soil, like using, going with straight compost can work. But if you're looking to level the lawn and have that, all that leveling work stick around for like multiple seasons, you want, you're going to want to have some sand in there. You know, the, the, the best, the best way I heard, I've had it, I've heard it explain the guys um, the people from soil cubed um from superside came up with and told me that and i wish i thought of it but they say you know sand is for structure and the compost or the, in their case their soil cubed product is for feeding or helping improve organic activities or to help helping um, improve your organic material in the in the soil so sand if you want to actually level things and and have the the lawn remain smooth and i do have a video showing you how i did that um, uh, let me see if I can find it. If the, if the Google search will, um, cooperate, let me see if I do soil, will it find it? Uh, I did. Yay. Yay for that. Yay for search. All right. Okay. So, um, Edward in the chat, this is a video that I did earlier this year where I top dressed with, I top dressed just the front lawn with a, a largely compost product. I don't know if it's an air, an, an aerobic compost, but it's a very, very good compost product um, from, from Miramichi Green. So check that out and you can see, um, you know, how I, how I did it, how the lawn looked and, and everything that went along with that. Again, I would, it's fine to do that as long as your goal is not to level the lawn and have that leveling stick around because, uh, you know, the compost is eventually going to break down. You're going to be not quite right, exactly where you started, but it's not going to be, um, you know, it's not going to produce the same results that a 70, 30 mix would do. So, so something to keep in mind. All right. Um, let's see. Um, da, da, da. we got, uh, John, I think, yeah, I got already answered John's questions. Uh, Alex is saying, yeah, I'll try that. I have both liquid options, both from Ron's golf course, lawn store, nutri kelp and Nutrisol. That phase can be very frustrating with Kentucky bluegrass. I dealt with some stagnation during my autumn renovation. So yeah, man, let us know how it works out, Alex. Should be cool. <laughs> and John Finley says, baby or kid proofing chemicals and mowers. Um, oh, is that the question you're asking about the video? Um, well, I don't have any babies around right now or kids. Um, and the chemicals, I, they're like in the garage away from, you know, again, I don't have any kids around. So they're, they're in a place where they're not really accessible. Uh, to them. And I guess as far as kids, you just need to tell them don't drink, don't drink stuff out of bottles that mom and dad didn't give to you. Um, and as far as the mowers, um, you know, keeping, keeping kids away from the mowers. I don't know. I don't really want to keep kids away from mowers. I mean, once they, once they're, once they get to be around 10 years old, once they hit double digits, you need, they need to learn how to run a, a lawnmower. I mean, get, get me a kid uh, to learn how to run a lawnmower, run a string trimmer. That's good. Uh, that's good home training. So, uh, you know, chemicals. Yeah. We'll keep them away from that. But like running a lawnmower or a string trimmer, you know, just, you know, make sure you put the PPE on them, you know, get them, you know, some long sleeve pants, long sleeve shirt, get them some, some eye pro and, and, uh, and show them how it's, uh, how it's done. Uh, great, great question, John. <laughs> All right. Next up, um, Merrill Williams says planning on top dressing with carbonized PN next year. Do you have any more information about this product? Yeah, Merrill. So I just covered some of it. Um, so carbonized PN, again, it's a product made by Miramichi Green. Uh, great product. I top dressed my, my, just my front lawn with it last year. Got really good results. It is half um, compost and half biochar. So it's very, very, um, very rich product, really clean, no garbage in it. Um, you know, it's a, it's a great, great product for top dressing. If you can get it in bulk, uh, by all means go to town. It's not the most, um, inexpensive product, but it's very, very good. So it's like, it's like, any, it's like anything else in life, man. If it's really, really good, it's probably going to cost. So that's, that's what I can tell you about it. Um, you can think of carbonized PN as, um, like the non- granular you can take you can think of like carbon pro g 
or um, well, not, more like Carbon Pro G, not Essential G, because Essential G has more stuff in it than Carbonized PN does. But you can think of Carbon Pro G as Carbonized PN in a prill form with a, with a microbial package added as well. Whereas Carbonized PN is just the compost and the uh, the biochar, and then Essential G is compost, biochar, humate, silica, a bunch of other stuff. So it's like that's like again, that's like the next generation, the next the next new hotness from um, from Miramichi Green, which you can get at the golf course lawn store. So hopefully, um, hopefully that helps, um, Merrill. If, you, if I can help with anything else, drop a question and I will, uh, I'll revisit it. I will revisit it. All right. All right. Uh, next up, uh, Jonathan Sargent says, my backyard is, de is in desperate need of a renovation. Welcome. That's, that's like all of our backyards, right? <laughs> is I live on the Mississippi Gulf Coast and I'm wondering when should I start and can I incorporate leveling at the same time? Yes and yes. Okay. So the time to start, um, Depend and now, so you tell me what kind of renovation you're trying to do. Let's say I can tell you how I would go about doing it, right? Um, if you are looking to do like, let's say we're going to do sod, so you're going to burn down the existing lawn and then you're going to you're going to you're going to put sod in to get a nice a nice lawn. Um, you know, you can do that in early spring. You can do that in early spring. The sod will be growing in. You know, should, if it's Bermuda sod, and I'm answering it like you're doing Bermuda. If you're, the Bermuda sod will be rooted in and growing nicely within a month or so, and then when June-ish time frame rolls around, you're in great. You're in a great time for top dressing it. So that's going to get you. To, that's going to get you first the grass down. It's going to be rooted in, growing, established, and then you can top dress. Um, you know, a month or two later, and you'll be good to go. So you can you can totally knock all that out in a season if you want. You can knock it all out in a couple of months, really. Um, but yeah, that that is what I would do. I would um, I would hold off until early spring. In my early spring, I mean, um, you being Gulf Coast, you guys don't even get, it probably didn't get that cold there. So probably by early March, you could look into doing, laying down the sod, let that grow in. Um, and then by late, uh, eh, late, mid to late May, that's when you could look into top dressing. And then you're going to be good to go. Again, you could top dress sooner than that, but it's better to do it whenever the grass is growing aggressively. And, you know, late May, June timeframe is um, normally the case in the Southeast US for, for Bermuda grass. So that is what I would do. I would wait till, uh, till next year. So, so yeah, man, definitely do it all. Like, like go through all the pain at once, get the, get the, the saw down and, uh, and top dress. So there we go. All right. And then John is back. He said, oh, and thanks for the image tip. It did a great job of getting rid of the POA. I'm glad to hear it. So po that's the thing. People hate on image and it's it's a good it's a good product. I mean, it's just, you just gotta be patient with it. It's not like, um, you know, it's not like Roundup where you spray it and then, you know, hours later, the weeds are dying and dead. But it's, it's one of those things, you, if you apply it, you water it in and give it give it time to work, it produces a pretty good result. So, uh, so yeah. Yeah, I am a, um, I am a fan of, of, uh, of image, so. I'm a fan of it's also it's not not terribly expensive either as far as as far as a, a product to go as far as products goes. All right. Um when Jared says I mow leaves in training for next spring. Okay, that's uh that's one way that's one way to do it. That's one way to do it. And uh, let's see, yeah. So Alex and Demir are having a sidebar, and then Daryl is chiming in. He's saying, Hey Ron, I am Definitely sticking with Humic Max and the whole spoon feeding program you have. I had excellent results. Uh, the color uh, it made the lawn was amazing. Thanks for the kind words, sir. Yeah, absolutely, man. For those of you who have not seen Daryl's lawn, I'm just gonna brag on you a little bit here, Daryl. I'm gonna have to do it. I mean, I, I know you don't like it, but it's, it's gotta happen. I mean, that that's clean. I mean, I don't care who you are. That looks, that's some good looking turf right there. So granted, it's a lot of work. It's a lot of mowing that goes into doing that and spoon feeding does take more time um, than just you know put it throwing down a granular and doing it once every couple of months, but you know you get you get lawn or you get turf that looks like that, which is pretty pretty incredible. Really really good. Not bad for a grass. That a lot of people consider to be a weed and a pest, right, Daryl? So uh, good work, good work. Um, and then <laughs> Daryl says, Ron, I want to say how many bags I purchased. I don't want to say, but thanks again. You're very very welcome, sir. I uh, I appreciate all uh, the support. And then uh, um, Alex B says, we need to get those Henry Habib, forgive the spelling, collab hats available for purchase. Uh, these, yeah, so here's the thing. I asked Josh about that, right? And I said, hey, listen, what do you, because he sent me a couple others too. And guys, these I'm not giving away because I like I like my camo. So this one is like, I guess the winter, winter camo, like this all gray hat. I mean, that is clean. Look at that one. That one is pretty clean. And then... Um, my patriotic says my America um, flag and got got the camo 
and the American flag on the back. Like these two, these two I am probably keeping. Um, you know, because I just they're because they're pretty awesome. I don't I don't want to. I just I like them. I really like these a lot. You know, I like I'm, I'm a sucker for camo and love I'm a sucker for patriotic stuff, right? So so there you go. Um, but yeah, as far as selling them, I asked him about that already. I, I mentioned it, and Josh was like, eh. You know, it's kind of cool. They're only on the live stream. It's kind of special. You guys keep working on him. He might be in here. He might be in here. If you guys keep, you know, keep working on him, he might, you know, say, hey, yeah, let's just do it where we can start making the hats available for sale. But um, the last time I mentioned it to him, my man said uh, he's not down with that or he doesn't want to do it just yet. So we'll see. Just give it give it time. Just keep working on him. Just keep working on him. And sp speaking of Josh, speaking of um, of him, he must have been, must have been uh, listening uh, thanks so much, Josh. Appreciate you. Received. He says, uh, happy Friday, doctor listening during a marathon Lego build with my six-year-old. That's pretty awesome. Don't step on any Legos. That hurts. Uh, he says, I hope you're well. I am doing well. Can't complain. He says, LG has been pretty quiet since, <laughs> whoo, since the Bills dragged those Chiefs. I have a small moss issue in my front yard. Uh... Uh, front yard. I will reach reach out next. Um, I see. I get you saying next week, or, or over email. Let me know what, what, what you're thinking. So here's the thing. Um, as a Falcons fan, which again, man, it's, it's hard to be a Falcons fan right now. I can't talk trash about anybody. I mean, last week the Cowboys just they put on an exhibition on the Falcons, and I thought, you know what? It can't get any worse. It cannot get possibly worse. And what happens? Last night, you know, we play the Patriots, and the Patriots aren't even really that good this year. And they still beat us. We couldn't even put a single point up on the board. I, I think, and correct me if I'm wrong on this, um, I don't think the Patriots, I don't think the Patriots have ever lost to Matt Ryan. I don't think so. I think that is still, at, I know Tom Brady hasn't, hasn't lost to him, but I think that's correct where the Patriots haven't lost to him either, which is, you know, not good. But anyway, yeah, um, I'll let you and in, in, uh, LG hash it out there in the comments about the Bills and the Chiefs. Um, and uh, yeah, we'll see. There's still plenty of time in the season. You never know. Never know what's going to happen. Never, ever know. Um, and then Robert Moore just says, what am I missing? Uh, YouTube story. Tell me more. Okay, yeah, YouTube stories. So what that is, Robert. Okay, so um, with YouTube, there's a couple of ways to consume, to create and consume content, right? So you have like the videos, which is like the long, the videos that take a lot of work, a lot of, you know, I have to script them and do shoot lots of B-roll and take actually a five minute video, believe me, takes up six, several hours to put that together. Um, it takes a lot longer than what you guys actually see in the final product. So there's that content. There's the live streams like this, which you're on right now. And there's also um, YouTube stories. So YouTube stories are mobile only, meaning I can only film them on a mobile phone and you can only see them. Um, I think, yeah, they're only on mobile devices as well too. So if you, how can I show you this? Can I show you this? Um, Let's see, how can I show you this? Yeah, um, so if you look at, um, so if you get, if you have the YouTube app on your phone and you go and you scroll down, you scroll, you'll see here, um, there'll be like a shelf. There'll be like a shelf that looks like this. And if we can get to come in here. So when you scroll down, you see a shelf that looks like this and you can see like vidIQ, some of the stuff that I, I you know, some of the content I watch, you say BYD, sub BYD. Anyway, in there on your YouTube app, when you scroll down, like probably a third of the way down, you will see a, um, like my, my stories, you'll see like a, a, um, like a, a, little, a little card you can click on and it'll show you um, like whatever I happened to film that day. Um, and it's it's the way I do a lot of the behind the scenes type content. Like I'm like, hey guys, this is what's going on with my lawn. This is like the problem issues that I'm having, those type, that type of stuff. The kind of stuff that um, I could put in a video, but most people really don't care about because like people care about my lawn, but they really only care about my lawn in the context of how I can help them make their lawn better. So uh, the YouTube stories are more for the diehards that really just want to you know, see like weed issues I'm having or other, you know, other things like that. So, um, so check that out. Yeah. If you go look on the channel, like on, it's only on going to be on mobile. That's how you can see the, uh, the stories, the YouTube stories. So it's worth checking out. It's fun. It's fun stuff. They only last for a week. So if I, um, if I do a video like tomorrow, it's only going to be available for a week. So be sure to check it out within this course of like seven days. If you're really interested in seeing that. All righty. All right. Uh, next up we got Eric McC uh, McCann. Says, hey, Ron, I'm in Georgia. Welcome, you know, the state of Georgia, I like it. He says, with Bermuda grass, also a good choice. He says, uh, that is slowly going into dormancy. I have weeds that look like clumping fescue. Try to spot treat with tenacity. What do you recommend? Um, I would not use tenacity. Um, I would use, if you really want to, if you still want to, to go after the fescue this time of year, um, I want to say that um, 
uh, Celsius should still would still should still work fine. Um, uh, if you've not done pre-immersion as yet, Eric, um, coastal could work as well too. But Celsius is, pro is probably what I would I would go after if you're just trying to spot spray a few airs. I am not a fan of spraying tenacity on warm season grass. I know those people that say you can do it. Um, like you know, if the lawn is dormant, you can go ahead and you can spray it, and it's not going to kill anything. But <laughs> my point is like, why, um, like why risk it, right? Granted, it's not as bad as do as using something like um, like glyphosate, like Roundup on your lawn. But like, there are so many good products that cost around the same, like cost, like that are you know comparable in price with Tenacity that are designed for for warm season turf that will kill fescue and other other weeds and won't damage your, your Bermuda. So, I would much um, much rather I'd, I'd recommend going with something like like Celsius um, for that instead of um, instead of Tenacity. Again, you can do it if every if everything all goes to plan and everything goes well and the lawn is dormant. But it's just not it's just not worth the risk to me. Whenever there's so many great options um, that that will do the job and not harm your Bermuda in the process. So co so coastal. The other thing I was talking about was coastal, which is a pre-emergent um, with post-emergent in it as well. Um, that I believe will target. I know I know that tenacity. Def I'm sorry, tenacity. I know Celsius will. Um, I believe coastal will as well. So I'll put what I'll do for you. I'll put links for both of them in the um in the uh the the chat if you've not done pre-emergent this year as yet coastal is going to be the better option if you're just looking just to spot spray and only take care of just the, the clumps of fescue then um celsius is a better option so let me do this at eric at eric come on find him there we go so there is coastal and for celsius you guys are gonna laugh at me. Like I was misspelling Celsius for like weeks. I for, for Lord knows what reason I was spelling it with a, a C E L C I U S, which is it's S I U S. Don't know why I was doing that, but I was. So, but yeah, fun fact. Uh, and there's the um, the link for for Celsius for Celsius. So either one of those will should work well on your lawn. I've got videos on telling you on both those products showing you how to mix them and how to apply them, Eric. So hopefully that um, that works well. Let me know if I can help with anything else. All right, next up, we got Gary Kellett Jr. in the house. He says, I noticed my site one uh, location next to my house has a sale on fertilizer. Okay, what do you think about stocking up for next year? Got to remember, I'm outside Chicago. I'm worried about cold weather. Um, okay, yeah, so yeah, as far as if site one's got, if, if there's a fertilizer that you like from site one and they've got it on sale, then yeah, absolutely, I'd stock up as long as you have a place to keep it that's cool and dry. Um, so your garage, if your garage is insulated, which I imagine most of the garages in Chicago probably should be, but, um, if you've got a, a you know, a garage or somewhere that it's going to be, you know, it's not going to get damp or it's going to be, it's going to be kept cool and dry, then yeah, why not? Because again, to, to some of the points, some of the other viewers have been making hard to know what, what, you know, what things are going to look like next year as far as supply chain as, as far as being able to get, uh, fertilizers. So if you've, you know, if you've got a product that you like and you want to stick with it, um, then yeah, there's no reason to buy, you know, buy, you know, four or five bags. So buy enough to kind of get you through the start of the season anyway, of next season. And then you can see how things are and you can, you know, you can adjust accordingly. So yeah, I think that's, that's a good, that's a good strategy, uh, Gary. I absolutely would uh, do that. All right. Next up, we got Alex B he says, Hey Ron, by the way, I am always impressed with how quickly the golf course lawn store processes and ships orders yet again, less than 24 hours from ordering and the product can make max is well on its way. We try to, man. It's um, believe me. There's a lot of there's a lot of um, <laughs> there's a lot of chewing gum and bailing wire and rubber bands that hold it all together. That with all the fulfillment and making everything work well. But I'm glad to hear that you guys are happy with um, with how fast everything ships. It's a balancing act, right? Because um, on some level, right, you almost if you place an order. You almost want to give it a few hours at least, it, you know, maybe a day or so before you start to really fulfill it, because then that gives the person a chance that, you know, even though really, you know, on the the terms of like purchasing, purchasing, there's not really there's not really a means for you for canceling orders. But in case someone fat fingered something or they did something and they they need to cancel it or need to make an alteration, you know, waiting a few hours gives you a chance to fix that. But um, you know, with Humic Max, literally we're shipping it as quickly as it as soon as the orders come in. We're shipping it out because we want to get it to you guys, get it out of the warehouses, get it to you guys, so you can, um, you know, you can have it and just have it put away and ready for, for next season. So I'm glad that, you know, I'm glad that that's being noticed. Um, you know, a lot of hard work's been done in the background to make that happen. So I really, uh, really do appreciate it. So thanks you, thanks again for all the, uh, all the support. 
All right, next up, Christopher Burkett is in the house. He says, I have some brown patch in Zenith Zoysia. I've used Heritage G in the past with good results for other diseases. Would you treat with this and then come back during the spring green up and apply again? Sure, yeah. Why not, um, Chris? If you've gotten, if Heritage has worked well, um, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Go ahead, go, go ahead and make that application and then come springtime, you know, when you're entering the point where it can rear its ugly head again, you know, perhaps get down a preventative app, especially since, since you've already had an issue with this. Uh, I would not wait till um, the time frame that I consider to be like the preventative time frame for fungicides. So for you, a little bit doing a little bit earlier in the spring um, makes makes a lot of sense. But yeah, as long as the ground isn't frozen and there's you know like again using common sense when you're applying um, lawn care products, as long as you know temperatures are along the lines of where they should be for you to be applying this kind of stuff. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. If you, I mean, I would I would not just let the ground the brown the brown patch run rampant um, and not treat it especially since you've used the um, the Heritage and it's worked well. You know, something you might want to try is if uh, if you've not considered um, using um, Headway, granted, it's a little bit more expensive than Heritage, but then you get some propiconazole as well. So you get a, a different active ingredient um, to target, uh, you know, the lawn fungus that you're dealing with in your lawn. So something to consider instead of always using just um, azoxystrobin over and over and over and over again, just to, to mix things up a bit if you're if you're you're interested in doing that. So Her um, Headway is a good option, also from Syngenta, um, that could work well as work well too. So just something to keep in uh, keep in mind. All right, next up, Michael Pedrosa is in the house. He says I have lots of clover coming in to my renovation tall fescue. I have it treated due to 10% Kentucky bluegrass blend. It's been three weeks ago since I uh, seeded bare spots. Can I do anything? When? Product? SoCal? Um, where is Demir when you need him? Um, I would think Tenacity would, would should be able to do that. Um, and you said it's been how long? Three weeks since you seeded the bare spots? Check the label for Tenacity and make sure that um, that that's, that 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 um, that three weeks is enough time to do an application of it. I believe that it does target clover. Um, if not, like I, the tenacity speed zone combination that um, Princess Cut Lawn Care talks about, that should um, that should do the trick as well. Uh, that should do the trick for targeting for targeting clover in your uh, in your cool season lawn. Um, so yeah, take a look at tenacity. Look at the label for it. See what see what it says as far as restrictions around seeding, um, and also look at speed zone as well because you can mix those two um, and. Between between um, either tenacity or speed zone tenacity blend, that should take care of it. So uh, so hopefully that helps. Great uh, great question and, con and good luck and congrats on the uh, on the renovation. Good congrats on the renovation. All right, next up we got Clayton Wilson in the house. He says, Hey Ron, I've been using fertilizer uh, with iron added with iron. Okay, cool. He says, I see humic Mac doesn't list iron. Are you supplementing with iron? If so, what are you using? I am, I am supplementing with iron. What I am using, I don't have a bottle of it here. So I'll show you, actually I can show you. So um, what I use for um, some of my iron is this product, which is Turfplex, uh, Clayton. This is the liquid fur that I use. This contains iron, some manganese, some manganese, I can, I can never say that word well. I always mess up saying manganese, um, and zinc. So this this has some iron in it, uh, but the the majority, the bulk of my iron comes from a product called Nutrizolve. So let me take you over here to the golf course lawn store. Um, ba -ba 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 -ba. All right, so we'll switch over here, and you can take a look here. So the product that I use that I, I use in for spoon feeding is this guy. So again, the Turfplex. This is the one that I just showed you. This has some iron in it. Excellent product. Excellent product for spoon feeding. Um, and then um, as far as the micronutrient, Nutrizolve, this is the bee's knees. This guy has everything. It's got your iron, your zinc, your manganese, your boron, your copper. Um, not sure if I mixed anything. Molybdenum, a little bit of that in there. Um, this is what I use as far as, um, you know, to get the bulk of my micronutrient um, into, into the soil. Uh, the, the rate for both of these is um, six, the low rate anyway, is six ounces per thousand. If you're mixing them, meaning that if you're going to use like, uh, if you're using like the turf plex like this as your liquid fur, and you also want to use the micronutrient, the Nutrizolve as like a kicker to get the, to kind of as a filler to fill in your, your, your micronutrient needs. Um, I would use, I would apply this at six ounces per thousand. That's going to put down nitrogen at, at 0 0.10, 0 0.10 pounds. So a 10th of a pound of nitrogen. Um, with each app. And then the Nutrizolve, instead of applying that at six ounces per thousand, I would back it down to four ounces. So if you're mixing it with this, do four ounces of Nutrizolve 
with six ounces of the turf plex and apply that, mix it with one gallon of water and spray that over a thousand square feet. That is, um, that is literally what, uh, what I do um, on my lawn. You can do a six ounces per thousand with the Nutrizolve as well if you want, but it's kind of overkill and you're, you're, you're basically just wasting product. So six ounces of the turf plex, four ounces of the Nutrizolve mixed together with one gallon of water over a thousand square feet, money. You would like the results you get with that. So uh, so yeah, let me know if I can help with anything else. And you're right, um, the only thing that's really in the um, in the Humic Max is the, uh, the fertilizer, so the nitrogen and potassium. And then it also contains 8.9% humic acid. So that's that's the um, what's what's the the core components of Humic Max, which is cool because it gives you the ability, gives you more flexibility and options around the fertilizer you use, right? So so there you go. All right, Thin Cut says, I almost forgot. The 48-inch leveling rake I made has been tested and it worked absolutely perfect. So my man, and he was going out doing uh I remember you had your your uh, your your uh, leveling rate product and you built one, so that's cool. You said a little bit heavy with the handle, so I'll do a little refining on the handle. Well, you know that's one thing. Thin cut. I personally am a fan of a heavier leveling rake. I mean, I don't know, I don't know how heavy yours is. If you, um, you, I'm not sure you told us how heavy the the head of the rake is, but um, I prefer a heavier leveling rake than a lighter one because then literally all you have to do is move it around and the weight of the rake does most of the work, which I, I find that to be ideal versus the lighter ones where you have to actually press in and the negative of that is you end up pushing material away from where you wanted something to be versus with a heavy one, you just kind of plop it down and just move it around and it just does the job for you like a good leveling rig should. So congrats, man. Good job on uh, on your projects. I'm glad to hear that it worked out well and that you're, uh, you're liking the results you're getting with it. That you're liking your results. All righty, uh, D-Dom is saying, I put down three and a half pounds per thousand square feet of barricade on September 15th. Was that too soon? Uh-uh, nope, it wasn't. It says, um, do you recommend an app of of a of liquid in mid-December? I'm in flower rebranch with 419. Okay, so if you did, I don't know what um, 3.5 pounds per thousand of barricade, what that equates to as far as counting towards your annual rate for um, prodiamine. If it isn't max rate, if that if the rate that you're talking about is not max rate and you want to do a um, like another application of prodiamine, what I would do is I would not do straight barricade. I would do something like coastal. I would do something like coastal. So do a lighter app of coastal. Uh, again, look at just compare like the rates you use for the, for the barricade um, with the rate uh, for coastal and make sure you're staying within um, you know, your annual limits for prodiamine. Um, and then, yeah, if you, if you feel the need to do that, by all means. I mean, you really, to be completely honest, you really shouldn't need to. You don't really need to do. Um, um, you shouldn't need to do another application of pre-emergent. But if you're seeing a case where you're starting to see some POA grow in, or you know, some some issues like that, and you want to take care of those while also putting down some pre-emergent, um, and again, you have you've not exceeded your rates. I'm not familiar with the granular rates on prodiamine off the top of my off, for barricade off the top of my head. Um, then yeah, then you can you can absolutely use something like coastal um, to uh, to again some, get some more pre-emergent down and also take care of any weeds that have um, that have germinated. So that's um, hopefully that helps uh, D Dom. Um, and I've already put some links in the chat for coastal. If you've not seen, you should be able to scroll up and find it. But if not, just for you, just for you, and just because you're not too far away, um, I will um, I will post it again for you. So there you go, DDOM, and there's Coastal. That's what I've used. And as far as a video of how to mix it and apply it, or how I mix it and apply it, there's other ways of doing it, but how I do it, um, there's a video in the channel that will show you how to do that. Like my last video, last full um, video on the channel that I did was around uh, Coastal and Prodiamine. So hopefully that helps. All right, um, Eric McCann says, or maybe something that looks like sand ryegrass. I'm not sure who that was for, Eric, but um, I think it's for me, but okay. All right, um, uh, Josh, yeah, so um, Demir um, is, is chiming in about a way to get rid of moss. Um, uh, he says, Josh, if it's a small problem, mix half an ounce of Dawn dish soap in one gallon of water and spray on the moss, won't hurt the turf, it will nuke the moss. So there you go, so there you guys, you heard it tonight. Um, so. Don't buy Moss X or Moss EX anymore. Just get some Dawn dish soap, dilute it, and uh, away you go. Very cool stuff. It's a good tip, Demir. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Um, we're getting close to giveaway time, guys. I think we're pretty close to doing the hat. Pretty close to doing the hat. Um, all right, uh, Jonathan Sargent says, thank you very much. You are very, very welcome, sir. Thank you for coming to hang out and ask questions on the live stream. 
And Thurston R says, of course he's gonna say yes. He says, hey Ron, enjoying the live stream? Yes, I would love some content on lightly top dressing, bumpy ears, and the best material to use. Also spot seating, bare areas after lawn renovation. One last mode tomorrow. So here's the thing, Thurston. I have covered the spot top dressing in a video already that would be very difficult for me to top. Like I was, ve I'm very, very proud of this video. It went really, you know, I think it came out really well. I tried to add some humor to it and make it a little bit more, you know, cinematic and, you know, fun to watch. So if you've not watched this one as yet, this is an, uh, actually a fairly fun video and it's all about top dressing, small bumpy areas of a lawn, like small ruts, small problem areas. And it's short and it's actually fun to watch. Um, so check this one out, you might, you might like it. And then as far as seating bare areas, um, I've got some of that in another top dressing video, but yeah, that's gonna be something for next year we can uh, we can revisit, we can revisit. But uh, yeah, thanks for the ideas and I appreciate you watching uh, watching the content. All right, Clayton Nichols is back. He says, hey, any ideas on what I need to do throughout this winter? I don't know, man, your grass looks pretty good to me. I don't know that I would do very much to it. It's looking looking pretty good from what I'm seeing in your uh, on your avatar. It says, a newly seeded in Monaco Bermuda, so I couldn't put down any pre-emergent. I'm nervous with how it will look come next year. I will be doing 100% sand level next. Over the winter, not a whole lot, man. Just let it go to let it go to sleep and relax and, and hang out. Um, you might have some POA that you may have to deal with, some weed. You may have a little bit more weed pressure than you would have had you put down pre-emergent, but you can always just take care of it in the spring, right? So I, I wouldn't do anything. I mean, you... You um, went out, you did a full renovation, you did the seated Bermuda, the Monaco, and you know, let's just not do anything that, that can uh, potentially jeopardize that. Just, just go into next spring knowing that you're gonna have a few more weeds to deal with. That's completely fine. That's what, that's what um, Celsius is for. We'll get, you know, you, you'll be able to get rid of them and then you can uh, next, you know, next fall, you can go ahead and do your pre-emergent and uh, be good to go. So, um, so yeah, not, not a whole lot. If you've not done a soil test, one thing I can, I can suggest, if you've not done a soil test, Clayton, consider doing that because if your, um, if your soil is on the acidic side, uh, now is a good time to get some lime down to start moving that pH in a better space um, cut for, for spring. That's pretty, that's the only thing I'd really suggest doing around this time of year. Anything else, I would just say just relax, um, you know, watch football, enjoy a nice lemonade, uh, and just, uh, yeah, just wait till we'll, for spring to roll around. It will be here before we know it. Believe believe you me. It will be here before you know it. And uh, and you said, thanks for everything. You're very, very welcome, sir. Thank you for watching the content. I, I, I appreciate you guys. You gotta remember guys, without you guys showing up and like hanging out in the live stream or watching the content, then there's not really a channel, right? So you guys are just as much a part of it as I am uh, making the content. So I really appreciate you guys. All right, uh, Lois is in with a question. She says, hey Ron, I have a corner property with a large public area. Um, I mow it, pick up the leaves, but I don't weed it. It's full of weeds. Will I bring weeds into my yard? I bought three bags of Humic Max. Well, first of all, thank you for buying the, the Humic Max. I really do appreciate that. Okay, so you have a corner property uh, with a large public area. Okay, so, so I'm guessing you see, I mow it, pick up the leaves, but I don't weed it. It's full of weeds. Well, I bring weeds into my yard. You possibly can, yeah. So I guess if I'm, if I'm reading your question properly, you're saying that you have a corner property and you're mowing both your lawn and I guess like a public area that's attached to your lawn that's got a ton of weeds in it. Uh, yeah, totally, if you, if you are mowing that, um, it is possible that you could transfer weeds into your lawn. But here's the thing, if your lawn is is right up against that anyway, like um, birds can transfer weeds, the wind can transfer weed seeds. So it's not like, I don't know that mowing is gonna be the thing that causes a mass outbreak in your lawn. You know what I'm saying? So um, if you're putting down pre-emergent on your lawn, on the, on the non-public area, that will do a lot for keeping the weeds out of it. But I wouldn't, I guess I wouldn't sweat it too much. I mean, if you're really, if you're really concerned, you could bag the clippings whenever you mow the public area. Um, you know, assuming it's not too big, it's not too much a pain to do that if you really wanna just be extra safe. But considering they're right next to each other, you know, what's in that lawn is probably gonna end up in your lawn as well, you know, cause they're, they're literally next to each other. If I'm reading your question properly, um, so yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't sweat it too much. You know, put down some pre-emergent and then and uh, that should help keep um, the weeds from the public area out of, out of your lawn. Uh, great, uh, great question. And definitely when you, when you try the Humic Max out next year, let me know how it does for you. I think you're gonna like the results. Um, but, uh, but yeah, definitely let me know how it, how it, uh, it works out for you. All right. Um, Eric McCann says, uh, thanks for the advice, Ron. Um, uh, very ap uh, appreciate the expertise. Happy Thanksgiving. Thank you so much as well. And on the topic of Thanksgiving guys, here's the thing. So you guys know I hate missing live streams, right? I really hate doing it. But next week, 
I there's a strong possibility that there will not be a live stream next Friday. I cannot promise there'll be one next Friday because there's going to be family in town visiting. Um, and they may want to go out to eat or do something. Lord knows why you want to go anywhere on Black Friday. Um, but if they want to do that, I can't be like a Grinch and be like, guys, I can't do it because, you know, the live, the live stream folk will get at me. Or if I or if I have a live stream next week, it's going to be short. If there's one next week, it'll be short. But I'm kind of leaning towards there not being one. But either way, I will let you guys know. You guys know I hate to cancel. I try to be consistent for you guys. Um, but I think last year I didn't have one either on Thanksgiving. I want to say we didn't. But if, you know, we'll, we'll see. I, I will I will put it to the family and see what they think. And uh, we'll decide based on that. But that's, that's one possibility for next week. There may not be a live stream next week. We'll see. So it's kind of up in the air. But I want to prep you guys now for that. All right. Uh, Robert Rainey's in the house. He says, good evening, fellas. What's going on, Robert Rainey with the high finish. Looking good, sir. And um, Thurston R. says, question, does, dorm, does, does Clover go dormant in winter? Uh, I don't know. That's a good question. I'm not sure on that one, um, Thurston. He says, neighbor's lawn is infested and spreading into my lawn. Definitely plan on, on treating in the spring with speed zone. Um, I would just try and kill it. I wouldn't take the chance of waiting for it to go dormant. Like, Because here's the thing. If it goes dormant, right? Um, if it goes dormant and it doesn't die... Um, as part of going dormant, in other words, like it like literally goes it goes to sleep and it's gonna wake up again. Like next spring, you don't want it waking up in your lawn, right? So I would I would say the fact that it goes dormant or not, which I don't believe it does, but if it does go dormant, it's kind of immaterial because you probably don't want clover in your lawn. So I would get uh, you know, the whatever your your herbicide of choice is, speed zone, tenacity, whatever you decide to go with, and I would just I would take care of it. Um I wouldn't you know, um hedge on it going dormant to not being a problem in your lawn because if it does go dormant when it wakes up it's, it's still going to be there right which we don't want so i would kill it all right uh next up we got mr noob he says love the chat but we'll have to hear the rest tomorrow wife wants to spend quality time that's important that's good happy wife happy life man uh, definitely go do that is it wrong to have her is it wrong to <laughs> is it wrong to have her stand in front of my lawn so i can see um, behind her while I zone her out. Um, is it wrong? Um, I, I would not do that. That could be, I, it's just not worth it, man. Cause you don't, you don't want, here's the thing. You don't want to be one of these situations where when you want to go out to mow, where you're like, um, Hey hon, I'm going to go out to mow. She's going to be like, Oh, you're going to go mow again. You don't want to have to have that conversation every time you mow. So it's a small concession, you know, to, you know, get off the live stream a little bit early and go spend time with wifey. Here's the thing. It's recorded. You can watch it tomorrow. You can watch it twice tomorrow if you want or monday if you want so there's that and uh you know so i i would um i would err on the side of keeping a uh, wifey happy versus not doing that if at all possible it's, it's a reasonable request a friday night you have been hanging out for a while um so why not not gonna hurt anything all right next up we got grasshopper lawn karen george says hello everyone what's going on all right and um d dom says uh thanks ron it was 7.2 pounds uh uh, support two pounds per thousand square feet max rate per year for, for the barricade. Yeah. So if that's the case, DDOM, you are probably, you're good to go. If you want to put something else down again, you, you shouldn't necessarily have to, but if you're seeing some issues with weed, a little bit of weed pressure and you want to um, knock them out and also do put down a light app of crediamine, that's where something like coastal uh, will come in. All right, folks, it is time. It is time. I have no more questions and you guys have not asked any more questions. So now it is time to see who the winner for this week shall be for the Ron Henry hat. Um, actually, you know what? Let's do this. We're going to do the hat um, and we're going to do um, I don't know, a couple of stickers too. So I'll do like two winners for stickers and then one for the hat. So let's do, let's do the stickers first. We'll do the stickers first. All right. So let me come over here and... Um, Let's see here. Go over here first, and I will reload the comments and bring you guys back up. All right, so you guys can see what I'm seeing. Uh, copy and reload, and then let me paste this, and then fetch, and see how many of you guys are asking questions. And again, if you won last week, you can't win this week. 58 folks. All right, so, so first, the first winner of a sticker is... Cal, I don't know if you're around Cal, but if you are, let me know. We're just going to run through these. So Cal want a sticker. Um, I actually should look for people that are actually in the live stream because I don't think, I don't recall seeing him. So Cal, sticker. Um, and then we'll do the second sticker, which is Gunny Grasshopper. Gunny, if you are around, um, 
you know, let us know if you would like um, a sticker. So just send me your address. I'll, I'll put that up here on the screen here in a second. And then the winner for the hat, the grand prize, right? The hat is, um, I don't think either Gunny or Cal are around. We have to do another drawing on that. Uh, the winner for the hat is, are you ready? Drum roll. I wanna make sure this person is here. Adrian Fraser. So, for, so tonight, I wanna make sure the person, um, <laughs> LG, LG Savage. He's like, let's not screw up the hat giveaway, Ron. I know, right? I know. Um, so here's the thing. Adrian Fraser, you are the tentative winner of the hat. I'm gonna give you like two minutes to chime in here that you're actually around because this time I'm not gonna mess this up. I wanna make sure that whoever wins is actually present so I can get this mailed out to you. So right now, Adrian Fraser is the tentative winner of uh, of the hat. And Adrian, you got like a minute to chime in in here and say, yeah, I am here. Um, send me the hat. Otherwise, we're gonna go back and we're gonna we're gonna draw again. All right, so I think a couple more questions came in here. Uh, Jose Amante says, does Coastal kill Poa and prevent Nuts Edge? Um, Nuts Edge. I'm not sure on the Sedge. It should. So the Amazequin. Um, so Amazequin is basically Image, right? And yes, that will kill Poa. Um, I have to check the label on Nuts Edge. I'm not sure off the top of my head on Nuts Edge. The best product really for Nuts Edge, um, Jose, is um, a product called Certainty. Certainties are really, as far as, it's, it's my favorite anyway. There's Sedge Hammer, there's a couple other ones, but I really like Certainty as a product for um, killing sedges. Um, and let me see here, you asked about Nuts Edge. Let's look at the label. Um, does it have Nuts Edge on the label? Let's look here. Let us see, does it have Nuts Edge? It says, yeah, so it's got purple. It's so it, it says it suppresses, which sounds like it doesn't kill to me. It suppresses uh, yellow Nuts Edge and purple Nuts Edge um, and green Kalinga. So it's not the optimal product. I mean, it'll probably help. It'll probably knock it back. It'll make the, the Sedge um, look like it's hating life. But as far as getting the same results that you would get out of something like Certainty, which will absolutely obliterate it, um, probably not as as good, but it will definitely take care of POA, right? Because two of the active ingredients in it um, will target POA. So uh, so yeah, it's you're good on POA. Sedges, um, you know, more like it'll just make it really angry and knock it back. So um, okay, guys. So I don't see Adrian. Adrian did not chime in. So we are going back. We are going back to the hat. Um, we're going back to the hat. No, Adrian, I don't see him. Sorry, Adrian, you missed out because you didn't answer. And the winner for the hat is JD. Are you here, JD? I don't see you. If you're if you're here, you got like uh, you know a minute to chime in and say that you are here. Otherwise, we're gonna we're going back to the drawing. We're gonna do it again. All right, and because um, I don't want as as LG so eloquently put it, I don't want to screw up the hat giveaway. I'm gonna do my best, LG, to not to not let that happen. Not happen tonight. <laughs> All right, C. Hill is saying, Ron, if you miss a day, a uh, week show, especially when family's in town, no one will feel different because you chose to be with family. Family first, grass, hashtag grass always. Thanks for that, C. Hill. I appreciate you. Um, we will see. We'll see how it um, how it works out. I don't see JD. JD, are you around? Um, nothing, nothing. I don't see anything. No message for, uh, for, for JD. Um, so we will go back. We will go back and we will draw again. No JD. Eventually we're gonna find someone that's in the chat. So the next winner is the Wind Chariot. Now the Wind Chariot I did see. I did see tonight. I don't know if he's in the chat still, but Wind Chariot, um, if you would not mind, sir. Um, and, anyone, and for anyone that won, send me an email to, where's my email? I think I've got it here somewhere out of all these. Yep, right here. Ron at, let me get rid of the MG code. Ron at golfcourselawn.com. That is my email address. Send me, <laughs> I'm reading LG's comments. Send me your address of where you want it to go there. Uh, and I will get it sent out to you. Send me the mailing address where you want the hat sent to and, and the stickers. And I will get them mailed out. And then again, uh, the code for next week is um, MG Green. Let me get my email off this. It's not a big mess. All right, cool. And then let's see what other questions we have before we close out for tonight. Uh, 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 Alex is like, as I follow up with the battery equipment, it seems like the larger equipment batteries do not hold up as well, especially over time. Neighbor has a battery powered snowblower uh, and mower with declining runtime. Even my 60 volt Toro leaf blower about a year and a half in does not hold 
near the same charge anymore and over 200 for a new battery. Wow, yikes, that is, that's kind of expensive. You know, I wonder, I wonder if it's the fact that it sits for a long time and doesn't get cycles. Like you think about it, your cell phone gets regularly cycled, right? Like pretty much every other day or every day for most people. I wonder if it's the fact that the battery sits for long periods of time without being charged, if that is help is causing it to degrade a little bit faster than usual. But um, yeah, not sure on that. Um, LG, I'm sorry, man, uh, we, we did it. I'm not sure if the wind chariot is here, but if so, um, if so, um, you know, send me a, email, a message. I don't see him chiming in. Wind chariot, if you're still around, man, um, let me know, because if not, I'm gonna go back to the drawings. I want the person that wins to say, yes, I'm here, send me the hat. So, even though Windshare was here earlier, I don't think he's here now, so we will go back to the drawings. I want the person who wins to say, yeah, I'm here, because I don't wanna have to hold on to this, and then people be like, oh, Ron, you're not, you know, you win prizes and you never send anything out. I don't wanna be that guy, you know? So, we'll go back, because I don't see Windshare and he didn't say, yes, that he's here. So, um, we'll go back to the hat, and the winner is, will be, Sam O'Neill, Sam, are you are you present? I didn't see Sam tonight. I did not. So um, I didn't see a Sam O'Neill. So we will go. We will go back, and we'll try again. Um, let's go with Mike Brown. <laughs> Mike Brown in his comments said, "I want a hat." LOL. Mike Brown, are you in the are you in present in the uh, live stream? Mike Brown, I don't, I don't recall seeing you here tonight, so I don't know if you're you're here or if you're still around. Um, but we'll keep trying. Um, I didn't see Mike Brown, so we'll move on. The next winner, next up, is uh, let's go with Kelby Ruiz. Kelby, I think Kelby didn't Kelby win last week. No, uh, he won before, but not maybe not last week. Um, <laughs> Um, hey, Kelby, are you in the live stream? I don't see you. I don't think I see you in here. I didn't see you tonight. So here's the thing, um, uh, LG. Let me go back to the, let me, while we wait for a second, let me go back and answer another question. Um, so I think so. we had some other questions here. We got the give, give um, LG a hat um, contingent. So Mark Houston is saying, good evening. What's going on, Mark? Thanks for coming to hang out. And then Mr. Teflon saying, thanks for the great content. I don't even have a lawn, but I enjoy the videos. I really appreciate that, Mr. Teflon. Uh, thanks for that. And um, and then and then CMAS says, what about a section of the stream to share pictures of our lawn? Yeah, dude, I'm totally down with that. Here's the thing: I, if you guys send me pictures of your lawn, I will I'll post them up. Yeah, I mean, I don't have I, I, I tend to I get pictures from people all the time, but unless I actually get permission to put to put the picture up on the live stream, I I don't do that because some people don't want you know they don't want their lawn put on the internet. So um, if you guys want to do that, send me pictures. I mean, just say, you know, what we'll do What we'll do is this. Send me an email, and I'm probably going to regret this. I'll get like a ton of pictures, but send me a picture. Send me an email here to run at golfcoursalon.com. Uh, and within the subject line, um, put in the subject line, pictures for the live stream or pictures for the show so that I know that it's something that it's going to be pictures that I can just pretty much sort through them when it comes to... Um, I'm you know putting together the the schedule for this for the show for the week, um, and then I'll take your pictures and I'll incorporate them into the show. So yeah, just absolutely do that. Just just send me an email ronatgolfcourselon.com and with the subject line pictures for the show or pictures for the live stream, and then I'll know that yeah you know this person wants me to, to show pictures of the lawn, and I will be happy to oblige. You guys can see um, the cool stuff. Um, let's see. I don't see Mike. I don't see Kelby. I don't see Mike. We're gonna go back here. We're gonna try again. No Kelby Ruiz. Um, and next we got Michael R. Michael R. Are you present? Michael R. Please come to the DJ booth. Um, I don't recall seeing Michael R. In the live stream tonight. So I don't think he's here. I don't think he's here. So we're going to, we're going to try another one that might be. Let's see. Um, uh, let's see. Uh, jo John Dugan. I don't think I saw John tonight. So John may or, not, may or may not be here. Oh, okay. Windshare is here. <laughs> okay, Win Chariot is here. So good. So so good. So no one else showed up, Win Chariot, that was here while you were gone. So you still win the hat. So send me an email, Win Chariot, to here. To here. Let me get uh, this off the screen. Uh Ron at golfcourselawn.com. Send me an email and you will win the limited edition, courtesy of Josh Shabib. Um Trucker hat. It's a Richardson 112. You know, I actually should do some research to know what the different numbers mean. But um, but yeah, you will be the winner of this hat. So just let me know. Just send me an email, ron at golfcourselawn.com, and I will get it out to you uh, post-haste. So 
Very cool. So you guys see, Winchariot is here. He says, um, hey, Ron, did I win? Yes, you won. So send me a picture, or no, send me a picture. <laughs> send me an email with your, ad your address of where you want to go, and I will send the hat to you. And um, let's see, Les F asked a question. It's a good one. He says, is human char and essential G the same thing, relatively speaking? Uh, no. Um, human char, I believe, is compost and biochar. Essential, well, I mean, are they are they in the same universe as far as products? Yes. But are they like, um, are they the same? No. Because um, essential G, in addition to having biochar and compost, it also contains humate, humic acid, and um, silica. So it has has um, more products, has more, it contains more ingredients than um, humichar does. So um, they're similar, but not not the same. So hopefully that helps, Lance, uh, as far as um, differences between essential G and uh, and humichar. Well, guys, uh, and you know, Dwayne, we can do that, man. If you say, can we have a contest for best dormant lawn? I'm down. If you guys want to send pictures of your lawn, here's the thing: don't send me a dormant lawn with tons of weed. I mean, if you want to send dormant lawn with tons of weeds in it. Um, we can do that too, but I mean, I'd like to, I mean, a dormant lawn with some stripes, that would be cool, because you can stripe a dormant lawn. I'll put it up on the channel, I'll show it off, why not? If you guys if you guys wanna do that, we can absolutely, uh, we can absolutely make that happen. Just send me pictures for the live stream and we will uh, we will make it happen. And when Chariot, uh, yes, you're here. So you got the the instructions, sir, send me an email with, the, with your address. And I will get the hat out to you. I'm trying to see what other <laughs> questions here are here. Well, LG uh, checks himself into therapy after the giveaway uh, is is over. All right, and uh, very very cool. All right, and then we have a question from CMath here about Malorganite, about Milo. He says, "Is Milo the fertilizer to use if fruits are in the area?" Um. Yeah, I mean, you could use malorganite. Yeah, I mean, some some type of organic fertilizer is pro is what I would go with. CMAS Milo is a is a good option. So yeah, yeah, absolutely. If you got fruits in the area, other edibles that you want to eat, fruit, fruits or veggies, and yeah, go with go with uh, something like um like Milo, like Milo. And congratulations, Wind Chariot. Uh, you said you never win anything, but that is not true. You won tonight. So you know, yeah, you go buy a lottery ticket this weekend, and uh, and if you did. Um, if you buy a lottery ticket and you win, you know, your charge is you got to like, you know, fund the Josh Habib fund for getting more swag to give away on the channel. So that's, that's, that's the only ask if you win the lottery, you know, so, and then buy yourself another Harley, uh, as always. Um, but then here we go. Best dormant lawn contest. I'm in. Yeah, everybody. Let's, 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 here's the thing. So we will do this. We will do two. We'll do, we'll, we'll have like two categories. We can do like best dormant lawn, like stripes, like, you know, a lawn that's normally awesome looking when it's green. And, you know, now that it's dormant, you're going to go out, you're going to, you know, you're going to show it off with some stripe action when it's dormant. And we can also do like, you know, you know, a work in progress. So those lawns that are under work that are looking really rough during the dormancy, we'll show those too. So we can see, you know, what, what how it looked now. And then you have it cataloged on the internet forever. So when next spring, when you fix your lawn, it's looking all awesome. You have a way to look back and say, hey, that's what it looked like before. And this is what it looks like now. So all lawns are welcome, both super awesome ones and ones that are works in progress. So very cool. Well, guys, thank you guys so much. Again, Win Chariot, congrats on winning uh, the hat. I can get this out to someone. Um, send me your address. I'll do that. And again, guys, next week, um, we may or may not have a show. I will definitely let you guys know via the community post or via like a YouTube store or something. You guys will know for sure whether we're doing one or not. Um, and be sure to take advantage of that discount code for next Friday. It's, it's MGREEN10. It's going to save you 10% on everything um, from Miramichi Green that's in the golf course lawn store. So from Friday tomorrow, uh, not Friday tomorrow, from Friday next week, the, uh, I think it's the 26th, uh, Thanksgiving, uh, the day after Thanksgiving, Black Friday day through the end of the month, November 30th, you have that time to save 10% on all Miramichi Green products in the golf course lawn store. Humic Max is still on sale. That's 35% off. Keep, you know, keep buying that up because that's going to run until, um, until supplies last. Um, so it, 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 definitely take advantage of that. It's a great fertilizer at, um, at an amazing, amazing price. I'm looking forward to it, guys. I definitely get those pictures together for the, uh, for the best dormant lawn or best lawn transitioning into dormancy, uh, contest. And I'm not sure what kind of prize we'll do, but we'll, we'll make, we'll have some fun with it. So, uh, so yeah, I'm looking for those pictures. Well, guys, again, thank you guys so much. I really appreciate you guys taking some time out of your Friday evening to come hang out and talk about turf. Um, I will see you guys maybe next week. If not, definitely the week after. So uh, if we don't talk next week, have a safe and happy Thanksgiving. 
Um, you know, make sure that you, uh, you know, if you have any friends or family you haven't spoken to in a while, take some time out, call them, check in on them. It's been a rough, rough two years for the planet. So, uh, you know, it's, uh, everyone could use, um, a little checking in on, you know, especially around this time of year around the holidays. So, uh, thanks you guys so much for taking or trusting me with a bit of your time and I will.